coming up on this episode of The Brain Drain Show. Big up Weiss. He's the best man. He totally made my time in skating what it's been, you know? He cares about every person that he works with. I was killing it in 2012, I guess. Someone's like dropping on the vert ramp. It was like the first time I dropped in so far beyond my ability. I just like straight to the floor. And then I didn't drop in on a vert ramp for like another three years. I like Ollie melloned everything because that was how I saw Pete King doing it. It's not just about like what you're doing. It's like, how many hands do you shake? You know, Weiss asked me about doing this next thing. What if we did like different team that was like an offshoot of blind. I don't know the ins and outs of everything that happened at Dwindle, but it just basically fell apart. Some people bought it. Seems like their intention from the beginning was strip the assets and sell the companies. And the new guy, he called me and was like, why is everyone leaving? Like, why are all the riders quitting? And I'm like, you don't get it. Like, you just don't get it. And he's like, well, so what did we do that was so special? I'm gonna be in that dude's office every day. I'm on his desk we'd learn a trick and then i'd be like well you're never going to do it like jimmy the coolest thing with jimmy is like he can like almost see into the future it's like what could be possible with this trick obviously this is a disaster if you're not filming the gnarliest thing what's the point well, we're just skateboarders and we're here and we're doing it Good evening and welcome to another great episode of the Brain Drain Show with me, Ford Brookfield. Joined to my left is my great friend Toby the Chimp. Toby, no, tell him your no, full no, name. No, 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 we're not having, no, start again. Toby not, the Chimp. No, I'm not doing it. If you're saying Toby the Chimp, that is not fair because that's the Toby sort of, teabag the people, the, chimp, will go, so. the people will go on the car, Toby the Chimp. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be like, oh, there's Toby the Chimp. I don't want to be referred to as a monkey well you've even got <laughs> to, we'll call the podcast baghead and the chimp you've even got teabag toby <laughs> right. richmond fingers can you just call me by my name please right. then. sausage <laughs> fingers is pretty good he's pretty good at well, it. they've all saying i had sausage fingers but i thought my fingers were all right they're like they're i mean i don't know what your fingers look like i that's... just think it's a funny image of yeah they look like normal hands that's what i'm saying like and then who was it that said he looked like someone out of prison break was it for that, that was me oh yeah <laughs> that was me join to our left is a very special guest it's sam beckett it's sam beckett round of applause in studio audience please so just Sammy. before we get into this just a little um ford's just, got a really good question he wants to ask it's you. not a question it's just a fun fact a statement yeah Go. have you been on your skate park of tampa profile not not for a long time. So every, get it loaded, please. <laughs> so every year there's a picture on there of you, but the picture from your mugshot from 2012 is a mugshot of TNT <laughs> for no reason. Like scroll down. That, that's quite recent. Though. Keep going. Under there. Look, 2012's TNT. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was killing it in 2012, I guess. Like, like what is that about? Why, why, why is it? <laughs> Look at... <laughs> That's that's unusual, isn't it? Yeah, like, I've never it, seen that before. And how would someone have searched Sam Beckett 2012 and been like, oh, that's him? Like, look at the difference. I like, mean, what, from... you'd have thought they would have, they might not have known who I was, but you'd have thought they'd have known who, known who Tony T was. Well, no, going on that, they've got it right for more of the years than they haven't. So they obviously knew who you were, but they maybe yeah. they just put that into, maybe you upset someone there at some point. Or something I don't know. Right, should we get into the the, the bones of things? The nuts and crannies. The, the, the nuts and bolts. Where are you from, Sam? I'm from Norfolk. Whereabouts in Norfolk? Let's get down to uh, the nitty gritty. The nitty gritty. A uh, place called Wicklewood. Never heard of it. It's uh, next to Wyndham, which is next to Norwich. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I'm not from Norwich at all. Yeah. Is um that's where you got into skating? Yeah, that's where I grew How up. How did you get into skating? It was definitely that was like Tony Hawk. Pro skater, to to you were like boom. a Tony Hawk kid. I was one of them. Yeah, like yeah. all of my sister's mates. She was like a few years older than me. They were all wearing chain wallets and Ooh, it was a good era. Skateboarding and mm -hmm. listening to Blink on Eight Two and uh, playing Tony Hawk. And then I just like kind of got in with them a little bit mm. and just got into skating. Me and my mate were just playing in his back garden. You know the classic. Yeah. But then, um, should I just go into it? Did, did yeah, you like, I'm just, I'm just, just trying to think. So what lot. sort of time that was like mid 2000s, early 2000s? Yeah, so it would have been... So what was the skate park over there at that point? Was there much going on? Because what, what I'm interested in is how most skaters will turn into street skaters, but you went the vert direction. So I'm curious how coming from that part of the country where... There isn't... That. There's there fuck wasn't all. anything. Yeah. There's not, I mean, there's not barely any street spots. Yeah. How, like, how did that all sort of happen? Um, there was Urban Flight, 
that was in the bus depot and that was open for like maybe I caught the tail end of it. It was maybe open for a year. I went there on my 10th birthday. So that was in Norwich, right? That was in was Norwich. Was that the one that had the, it was like a, a vert ramp that was kind of really small and like went to vert pretty quick, real whippy and yeah. had holes in it. Yeah, I went there once. Shit. Yeah. Uh, the place was dog shit. So I didn't skate vert, but there was like a really long mini ramp that was pretty sick. Yeah. The street, the, there were people that skated there though. There was a yeah. skate scene there. I didn't know anyone. Um, what shops were there at that time? I can't really think. It was Hoax That's right. and Drift. Um, yeah, Hoax and Drift. Is Drift still there? That was more no, so Drift, snow, wasn't it? So yeah, they, they did a bit of all sorts and then Drift <clears throat> turned into um, Drugstore. Right. Or like oh, okay. Drugstore was at that, the <clears throat> location that Drift was at for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then they moved again. Um, still going. Drugstore still going. They got... Uh, Little park in the church now. That's right. That's yeah. Yeah. Stuff, don't I? yeah. So it looks like Sam. a fun Sam, location. Sam, yeah. yeah. Was you skating on your own at first or was it already nah, like just, a little crew? Oh, we had a little crew. It was yeah. like in the village, there was like six or eight of us, like two twins, my mate's older brother, mm -hmm. another older kid, a mate, a couple of mates of mine, and we just like buttboarding everywhere. Like yeah. there was a hill and a yeah, curb. Classic. We just buttboarding and going to the curb and urban flight was there i caught the tail end of urban flight it was maybe open for like a year or that's so the when i was name for a skate park. yeah so I thought it was is that so it there <laughs> that's it yeah that looks amazing so, yeah that, that's the like long mini ramp section and then to the to the right is like a midi ramp with a spine that part looks great <laughs> you're just saying that because i said it was shit no it's if actually, i said it was good you'd say it was shit no it actually yeah. looks really good i like parks like that it didn't last long though, really, from what I remember. I yeah, remember. I don't know how long it was there for. I mean, they there was a vert ramp. It was the first time I'd been to that skate park and I was just like, you know, you're, you're a kid and you go and drop in on every, everything. everything in the park yeah. and you get yeah. bigger and bigger and someone's like, drop in on the vert ramp. It was like the first time I'd dropped in ever. And someone was like, yeah, go drop in on the vert ramp. I'd probably been skating for a bit by that mm. point. And I was just like, yeah, I'll just send it. <laughs> and I just like, I had like a, you know, one of them like complete boards from wherever the sports yeah, shop yeah. and like i was just like yeah i'll just send it and i just remember like going up to the top of the vert ramp not thinking about it dropping in and it was like so far beyond my ability i was just like straight to the floor he probably put the massive hole in it that was there when i, no, I don't, know, don't know but i was just like i hadn't thought about it until that point i was just yeah. like oh people can just do this yeah and then i didn't drop in on a vert <laughs> ramp for like maybe another three years yeah I was, so i'll leave that one so then so that closed by the time that you got into skating vert. Where was it that you actually started skating vert? Um, and why did uh, you, why, like, yeah. how did that go from sitting on your ass, bombing around the village to trying to drop in a vert ramp, leaving it to actually getting into vert? Um, there was a few things. There was another kid. So I'd kind of like fallen off skateboarding. Maybe I was about 11 or 12. Mm -hmm. I kind of like fallen off a little bit. And I was, it was just like something I had. I had a skateboard and I was sort of, did a bit every now and then and yeah this kid uh who went to the same primary school as me paul luke ronchetti mm -hmm. who's one of the uk's finest vert skaters yeah, yeah. i'd say mm -hmm. um he sh did a like a show and tell in class and it was a vhs like video it was like a sponsor me tape that he'd made okay at urban flight and he's doing like fakey hang-ups on the mini ramp like popping and stuff and uh i was like i think i would I don't think I lied, but I was like, yeah, I do, I do all that stuff. Like, you know, and I hadn't really been to the skate park that much. Mm. Yeah. I was like, I want to go skating with you guys kind of thing. And then his mum used to take him all the time. So then I, we had another little crew, like me and Paul Luke and uh, a friend of ours, Elliot, and their little brothers. And then his mum would take us to the park in Yarmouth. It's called The Park, Great Yarmouth. It's a good name. Yeah. Where park. do you want to meet? The Park. Which the one? Park. Is that still there, the one in Grey Yarmouth? I think it's gone. They they it kept getting like flooded and stuff. But we go <coughs> we'd go there every couple of times a week. You know, Sundays was like skate day. And there was there a vert ramp there as well? No, but I just remember that was like what Paul Luke wanted to do, and it kind of just became the thing that we what skate like the vert. routine. Yeah, like we would like I didn't wear pads until I started going with him, and yeah, we'd skate the midi ramp and like pad up and try and do like indie airs and yeah early grab front side airs and stuff 
And then there's like this midi ramp in the back left corner. Mm. They used to get really good like crews to come through. Like mm. Blueprint would do a demo every I'm year. A, I went there with the Deaf guys once. And uh, uh, on the yeah. Squadrophenia tour, I think. Kate Last. definitely came on the Deaf. He got in trouble trip. for breathing fire. Though, yeah, didn't the, the guy yeah. went into that. Uh, but the guy who owned it, Roger, was actually super sound. And he was like just a legend, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, Duff's did loads of stuff there. So like, well, I wasn't that old. I was probably like 30, 12 or 13. I was sort of just getting into this. And uh, yeah, Ramers and mm -hmm. uh, Munson and Potter and everyone came down on like a Duff's thing and we just skated the mini ramp with them. And just like, that was it, you know, like, whoa, this is yeah, yeah. what's possible. I think Roger did a really good job of like showing kids that there was like teams out yeah. there and there were people mm. that were good and like, created a bit of, <coughs> of a scene around it and uh, well, that stuff's just really important isn't it to show that there's like bigger people doing it that are sick and you can kind of jump in on those sessions as well yeah like demos don't really demos and team things don't really happen anymore yeah and it, yeah. Would, it, it, would, be, it would be good to bring those back um, like, that big bank at the end that was like yeah someone on the quarter pipe product toss you know there'd be like 30 kids and just like every mm -hmm. time teams came through it's just like also, like another thing that they probably got a lot of people going there is because there wasn't much out that way. Yeah. So and there was fewer skate parks. So when you did things, it was you. You know that was part of the kind of. Yeah. Box, wasn't it? I, I mean, Norfolk train there a couple once to Great Yarmouth for the death thing. Is it's not on the way anywhere. It's like just, you don't go to Norfolk unless you go into Norfolk. Yeah. It's not it's like a place it. you end up going. Yeah, it was a busy part back in the day. So, um, what what was the first proper vert ramp then? Yeah, when did vert come into it? So, I was skating with Paul Luke all the time. He like his parents had kind of just seen that like skating was something good for him. Yeah, you know, yeah. like he he was. I don't know whether he like he wasn't necessarily like into school or whatever, and his parents had just or other sports. Or I was pretty happy doing whatever. You know, I was into hanging out with my mates so i did yeah judo and but that whatever they but they found <coughs> they'd seen that like skating's really good for him like let's really support him let's doing jump this on it yeah and they'd been out to america and he'd like sent me this postcard and it was like oh my god i saw bucky lassick uh sean white and whoever whoever skating a session at, at mm -hmm. the ymca and he came back and he brought like i'd given him some money he brought me a load product back like some indie trucks they got cheaper out there and yeah and then when he came back he was like i just want to skate that and then that was like went from going to the park at great yarmouth to like sundays going to like bay 66 or playstation at the time or, mm -hmm. and they had the ramp there and then there's a ramp at creation tony hawk's gonna do a demo i remember yeah, like yeah. sending i didn't i couldn't go to it because i had school mm -hmm. but his parents were like oh, i will take him and i remember like giving him my Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 like case to get it signed to get it signed you know Have you still got it yeah yeah still got it. amazing Sick. so like to, you know and then it was kind of like there was a bit of the vibe around this vert thing building and, and like, it was just you too just me and him really yeah. yeah um and like we had the other another mate Elliot and their the brothers but they were like not really into skating vert they just came to the skate park and just whatever mm -hmm. yeah I'm just curious because like it's a real specific element of skateboarding yeah, and like you know, when I grew up, we had Stevenage Vert Ramp was that still there, but we never got involved with it, and then it got smashed up and stuff. And I always regret not getting into Vert at the early age because I think you kind of got to get into it kind of early. Just, yeah, the earlier you get into it, the because better. now I couldn't think Comes. of anything more scary than yeah. standing at the top of a fourteen foot high vert ramp. So I'm always kind of a bit bummed out. I never got into it, but I'm I'm really interested in how everyone else got into it, mm. especially with your location being out there. You know, I think the crux of it was we were lucky that yeah. his parents were supporting him with get taking him places. Yeah, and you can jump in on that. I as jumped well. in on that, and then like my parents sort of also were like, "Oh, this is like something really cool in this for them." Mm -hmm. Like they're. We were doing like little comps at the park and like team comps and yeah uh i think they just saw it was like a positive thing <coughs> and then there was block less combat that was the first comp i went to i remember mm. going are with they like, still going yeah they're yeah they are aren't they yeah next month oh amazing yeah. so i remember going to that and like having 
I think I was just like was dropping in at that point and doing like alley kick turns and trying to do axle stalls and there was that and Red Bull did these like vert sessions. Mm -hmm. It was like Pete King, Ali Cairns, Dave Allen, Scotty was on them. And they invited like Renton Miller and a few people over to do these sessions. And it was just like, they give you product to do stuff. I was riding like 54 mil wheels or something. Just had my skateboard. You know, yeah, I didn't yeah. know there was like different skateboards. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then like getting some wheels and getting product and then realizing like, oh, I got to switch it up and, Paulie was just keen. So I was just like, yeah, let's do this. Yeah, I guess that helped, didn't it? Also having parents that will take you places. And, and that, that was, at that time, other than like skating in the village, that was my experience of skateboarding. So mm. it's like, they're going skateboarding. Can I come? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, like, let me jump in, you know. What was your, the, the learning curve of getting into vert? Like, obviously dropping in and kick turning and, you know, axle saws and stuff. But when, when did you get to the point where, like, you were comfortable with airs? And that, you know, and how long did that take? Like when I look back at it now, I think it was rapid. Yeah. It was yeah. basically like you drop in next to it. Like you just want to learn everything. Yeah. Early, yeah. early yeah. grabs. Because you're session. hungry at that age, Every, aren't you? you yeah. Just, axle stalls, like we're skating with people. Those Red Bull Vert sessions were really like beneficial for like mm. pushing people. You're seeing people skate, like seeing Andy Scott and, yeah, you know, like Ali and Pete were all on it. I just, yeah. just want to do a backside out like them. Like. So it's like, did they help you? Yeah, they kind of give you tips, but yeah. it's just like just being around it. What's basically. the top three tips of learning backside airs on vert sand bucket? Um, the way I started, I like Ollie meloned everything, right? Yeah, because that was how I saw Pete King doing them, and I was like, I want to do it like that. And I didn't, there wasn't like a there was a moment I'd seen Yoki Olsen skate at a demo, and he was doing this like the backside air, you know, yeah, like where you ride out and yeah, you grab yeah. the nose and you just not like, the peats aren't proper, but like, this, no, this, no, this but different just ways, like, isn't it? Just different. banging off the coping and yeah. flying up. Yeah. And then I, I'd want a karma board at a, like, uh, a thing at the park yeah. in Great Yarmouth. And I went, we went to Y2 skate and I was just like, I'm going to do a backside air like Yoki. Yeah. And then like, I was convinced it was the board that did it for me. Cause I was yeah, just like, yeah was skating and i just like tried a few and just did it and then i was like no i grabbed the nose mm -hmm. and i remember like there wasn't any learning and then i was just like i'll just do that carry on doing that so could you do the ollie and into the grab ones before that or yeah yeah i could do like ollie melons i know everything was pretty bugging you know like ollie melon like every time i'd grab front side i'd grab slob because that was like yeah easier as like, i didn't have any like it was like Munson and those kind of people skating with them that like kind of helped us develop yeah, yeah. some form because they were like, don't Can't do, do it like that. that. Yeah, you got to do it like this. Do it proper. Yeah, do it proper. And, yeah. you know, yeah. So, so there was a lot of sessions at Y2 Skate. Like at that time, Raymond was skating vert loads. Mm. Munson was skating vert loads. Blackwell was always on scene. Yeah. Nick Reese. There was a few. There was always sessions. And like, yeah. um, that was like, a, a really nice period of time was mm. why Peterborough was like pretty bit closer to us than anywhere yeah. else. So, but regular sessions there with what was the name of the guy who ran the park there? Oh, Lee. Lee, that's it. Horse. He was trying Horse to get Paul, something going again recently, wasn't he? Where yeah. it was like a membership, members only skate park. Oh, yeah. Which I feel like there's something in that kind of idea. But, yeah. But yeah, they had the little red mini in the like. Mm outside section I just remember learning like every trick on that mm -hmm. mini like early grabs the front side grind or like 50 50 fakies like there's was like a two foot mini it's just like you'd learn every trick on there and then skate the vert ramp and like just kind of missed everything else out in between yeah yeah i mean there's lots to be said about smaller ramps like getting to grips with how tri tricks work and things like that but i mean backside airs you kind of need a vert ramp to do that or unless your name's sean outside who can do them on everything. You can do, yeah. do them on anything. But yeah, it's quite good to have small stuff to get your confidence the with. The scoop. It. It's all about like mixing the ollie and the, and the ride out. In the, yeah. back, in, in the back foot. Yeah. Bang off the coping. Yeah, I can imagine like, it in my head. There's no absolutely no way I'd be able to do it. But I, it's like, you know, when you've studied it. You're skating for many on and years. you sort of pick your board up yeah. and like scoop it into your hand. Yeah. It's just like scoop. And then what about when you're coming back down? Do you like lift the back leg in a bit so you hit the transition? It's time. It's just like doing it a lot. 
basically. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't know if there's like a tip I could. But that karma say, board but definitely like helped you learn it, the, right? I think it was the karma board <laughs> for sure, and it was like an eight. It's inch, the first good thing. Eight inch karma board. board. Yeah. It's the first good thing we've had said about karma on this podcast. Ooh, to be honest with you. Burn. Burn. I mean, um, I also rode like a an, <laughs> an eight inch blueprint board. Yeah. Like one at one of those. Like I started to get some product from these like competitions yeah, yeah. that I did regularly, and I and I got some slide rails as well. So I was riding this like eight inch Fucking like weird green, setup. <laughs> uh, team, Mark Baines board. Or yeah, it? blueprint board with like some pink slide rails, and I was like wanted to skate vert. You know, I was like, fuck it. Yeah. Well, That's it worked weird. out. What were your um? What were you like early sponsors around that time then? Did you were you picking anything up around that time? What what age are we talking and how long had you been skating vert for before you started kind of like getting like the other little sponsor or something? And what it, what were your first sponsors? It all happened in like the space of a year basically, like that yeah. period from like being about twelve or thirteen to fourteen. It was like everything happened really quick. Progression at that age is so quick as well, isn't it? I think that's the time, you know, like mm. you're you're just absorbed by it all because we, we lived further away it's like sundays skate day seven hours at the park you're just yeah, there all like, day yeah um first bit of free product i got was from a company called greed okay I and like that. greed clothing yeah was that um i feel like blackwell had something to do he with did, them and yeah the, he was involved in it who it was, was it that? Like a, it was jesse martinez yeah was it, so it was thing? like and then there was a guy over here doing it. Someone was distributing it, so we'd get like the juice magazines yeah. and like wounded knee stuff. But I mean, it was a b whoever was distributing it was like a bit of a con. It was like we'll give you free stuff, you just pay for this. Like we got it cheap or something. It was like stuff that you wouldn't. I don't know. It was a bit like it was cool. It was the first like free stickers that I got from someone, mm. and um, me and Paulie did that for a bit, and then like. It was that one of the Vert series things, like they did the seaside sessions up in Blackpool. Mm. And it all happened at once. It was like Wingy was doing stuff with Globe. Yeah. Steve I love Wingy. Wilkinson, yeah. And uh I think there was like one of this one of the comps and it was like afterwards I was still just like skating on the ramp. So I was just like just that was it. You make the most of every time you're at the skate park because it's like yeah. you're not always there. And um I was just skating afterwards, I think I'd learnt some sort of flip i can't really remember and then like wingy was like hey, i think i want to like he'd been like giving me these vouchers to get shoes and he was like yeah do you want to get some shoes and then like, i was like walked away from that like oh my god yeah, and yeah. then like <laughs> same day dave allen was like i think we should send you some oakley stuff because he was like doing some team manager stuff yeah, for oakley. Yeah. and uh and then it kind of went from there and like Dave was getting boards from Pig City and Dave would just oh, give me yeah. his hand, like he'd barely skate his boards, like, you know. The hand-me-down boards. The hand-me-down boards, but they were like eight and a half inches and I was still riding the like seven and a half inch trucks kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I was getting Dave's hand-me-downs for a bit and then I think I was in Pasty somewhere and was like, you know these Pig City boards? Like, I'd quite like to buy one that's like my New. size. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, because Dave's are a bit <clears throat> big and he was like, oh yeah. I reckon we could get you some boards right, right and then like he just sent me some boxes you know and yeah, yeah that was kind of the setup and it was like Globe Pig City Oakley and at the time like Scotty rode for all of those companies so yeah. I was just like this is the sickest thing ever like yeah I'm on the same team so as how Scotty. old are we talking this time like 14 or something I'm 14 at that yeah. point yeah um and it was like I wasn't on Pig City for long before like wingy because he was doing globe mm. and they started blind europe and then i was like he was like i think this would be pretty good for you they started doing like blind yeah i don't know if it was like a splinter thing but it was like called blind europe it wasn't yeah. it wasn't just blind distributed in europe it was blind europe but yeah they had a whole separate team and everything um and it was we, a weird one for teams at that point wasn't it because it was like uk team european team american team there was just so many different little yeah offshoots of like one brand but just had different team divisions i thought it was a good way to do it actually because like you know well, it's, it just breaks down the stages doesn't it yeah like working your way up going from like flow to like blind europe and then you know obviously then blind us yeah it's kind of like categories of it mm -hmm. for those like european <coughs> dudes it's like if you're on you're either like 
just getting flowed boards yeah and you're kind of nothing or you're like on the the full team and yeah. it was like so many dudes that um were somewhere in the middle of that mm. so mm. like yeah they took me on it i went on this trip and i was still like i say i was like green as hell you know like pig city board like had two boards one for like vert and one for cruising around because i didn't want to mess up my vert board kind of thing mm -hmm. i'm probably like yeah like i say i'm like 13 14 that's the same time and uh on a trip with like wildman and daryl cashman and then there's like paul mac now mark appleyard um matt mumford mm. era antilla like all the kind of globe heads and i'm like losing your shit in well i just like i just don't have no place being there really yeah. i'm like oh i think we went to prissic plaza and i was like right get my pads on yeah like did a few backside airs in the but i, th I think mumford was like oh that's quite a nice backside air <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks but like Thank you, you know just a little kid with a pad bag like first time i've ever been on it anything yeah. yeah skate related and they're all like getting loose i think we went to blue dog yeah yeah and just like people are I don't, Daz, were you here when the, the global lot came to the Blue Dog? Yeah, I remember like Mumford and Appleyard being at the bar. Yeah. But I don't, I feel like that session didn't really go off. I feel like it might have been, it rained a bit or something. I think it rained, yeah. I remember sitting in the pub being like a bit scared. Yeah. Because I was in a pub. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like I was, Philip Schuster was like another younger, like, I don't know if he was Swiss or something. Yeah. But I was like, I was sat with him like. What do we do? yeah and like Eero was just like I've probably never seen people smoke weed or anything Eero's yeah, there, yeah. Like, stoned out. it mind. kind of for people listening the blue dog was the pub in derby on saddler gate that had a mini ramp in the back that was kind of my f i'd say that was my first uh viewing of like grown-up skateboarders yeah people skate like skateboarding happening in like that kind of yeah. way mm -hmm. and just like you know, Wingy hooked me up a lot over those years and just like, y you know, I, f I think about it quite a lot now. It's like, you take younger people around and, but like the way- th What were your folks like with that kind of setup of- They were cool. They were just like, you know, my, they were just wanted to support me, do yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like- They could see you were into it. So they could it was like- yeah, See I was into it. it. I was like focused on this thing whatever it was there was no like goal it was yeah. just like skate get get him out of the house and get better him at skating do yeah. this thing like yeah um and my dad kind of like weirdly like he was a science teacher that he was like there's loads of things about it that he was kind of into because he could like relate like the some, physics some physics stuff yeah. and some yeah. biology stuff and like he was big into that sort of biology side of it and he loves the natural world but there was like elements of it. And then it was just, it turned into me and him just going on these missions to places. By this point, like Paul Luke and his family relocated to America. He was like super into it. I think he was probably like about 16 at that mm. point. And like, and then it was just me and my dad. And we were like going on missions all over the place, like driving up to Blackpool, driving to, you know, he came on some of the Euro missions, like, and he knew those people. So he knew Dave and Sean and Wingy and like all the older Vert crew and Pete and he yeah. spent loads of time with them and he was just like, yeah, crack yeah. on, you know, like, I think they just saw that it was a positive thing and, mm -hmm. and they'd met those people as well. They were like, yeah, they were, they were right. Like there's good people in this thing. Yeah. It was, it was weird. Cause there was a big age gap there. You know, they're all like late thirties, forties mm. and mm. I'm like 14, 15 yeah. at this point. But I think they just could see they're good people doing they were going to show me like the world a bit like shit. Yeah. You know, I grew yeah, up good, a lot good in life that. experience, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. There's always been that thing with skateboarding. There's a lot of like age differences with crews and stuff. It's just, I know it just kind of lends itself to that, doesn't it? Because mm -hmm. you've all got that one interest to go skating. Yeah. Age sort of becomes irrelevant. Yeah. I think that was really prominent in the vert thing mm. as well. Cause there was like, so few of you, there was, I guess. yeah. So it was, everyone was in it together. Like I think you do, there would be a session day. You do, you speak to people if there were going to be a session and you'd all turn up and mm. you'd all be there for the same session. And yeah, and that was really like 
pretty awesome way to it's you know i guess that's how skating is but it's mm -hmm. like for me i never really had a crew growing up like because we were just like going to places yeah and they weren't quite my crew but they were the people that i skated with all the time and traveled with didn't yeah. really have like a bit of a crew of people that were like my age doing that thing until i kind of like moved to america or like carve wicked sort of yeah. came about and that yeah. little squad of people and spent a lot of time with those the welsh boys and stuff so. yeah yeah so blind europe and then it morphed into blind blind us just, just team yeah just blind like am I and, guess. and how what's the the the, the time scale with that yeah how long was you on blind for before you became full team and then went pro I was on blind forever, it felt like. I remember seeing you back when the new Cantalos Park opened years ago and you were yeah. on blind then. Yeah. And that's probably got, that's got to be like 2004 or five or something. Yeah, I'd have been about 15 or 16 yeah. when those like bowl riders things were happening. Hmm. So I was just in the blind Europe thing, started going to America and like doing the vert thing out there. And like mm -hmm. there was comps and started doing like am comps and Tampa Am. I mean, you probably tell me what year I went to Tampa Am. About 16 years ago. Um, and that was like that evolution of, you know, I met, got a monster out here as well. I was pretty young when I got a monster. It was, maybe like, was that paid straight away? Yeah. So you straight, like young, earning a little bit of money from... A little bit of money. All of them started off like, here's some travel. Here's yeah. some... Here's a bit of trip. 2008? 2008 yeah that sounds good but first time in tampa so you started getting a bit of cash so you were able to get about a bit more yeah, yeah before i left school i was like had a travel budget and i had money to do stuff yeah and i sort of like my dad was still we were still doing a lot of stuff together but i was sort of getting to the point i don't think they ever really paid for me to go abroad that much you know i like saved money like my granddad died he gave me I think it was about two thousand pounds. I spent it all just go went to Woodward, in yeah. like one. I just like did the flight out there, yeah, Woodward yeah. for a week. Yeah. Damn, Woodward kid. Yeah, I was interesting. I was a week at Woodward kid. That's crazy. Yeah. That was yeah. There was a few people I knew that were like keen on that kind of way of doing it. I think like you don't l learn that much in a week mm. out there, but what it shows you is that thing of like once you see what's possible and you see all, like yeah there are, there's a, there are all this stuff in one place and like there's concrete bowls and there's a vert ramp that's like it's 15 foot and there's a resi and there's like skated with bloody andy mcdonald you know and like <laughs> yeah. you see what's possible yeah. and then you come back and then you do all your learning yeah you yeah know? it's like that's what kind of gives you a bit of a, a boot to... so you were going out to the states at that time to enter like vert comp series or did you go out for i think like i went out for tampa I don't know if that was the first one I did, that one. I went out f for... For a Tampa Am. That 2000... 2000. Says 2008 Tampa Am Vert Finals placed four. Yeah, That's maybe. what it says there. Yeah. They could be wrong. That could have been TNT. I mean... <laughs> 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 but yeah, like... like I, I, I was right. I thought that that thing with you and Lily where you both went. Yeah, we both went yeah. and got fourth. Like when we were 16, we went to Tampa Am and got fourth place nice. in the vert comp. I thought it was pretty funny. Like I went 16 yeah. years later, yeah. just went with her this year. Yeah. And she got fourth and she's 16. I was like, yeah, I did that. <laughs> exact, 16 years ago. ABD, exact, mate. The exact same path. She also did the 540 as well. Yeah, the, the that was <laughs> crazy. So I learned McTwists at Epic Skate Park, which is now mm -hmm. creation. Mm. And I was about, there's footage, Andy Evans shot some footage of it. The first one? The first one. Well, there were the first few I'd done. I think I'd done one before that. And it was like the f session that I was like doing a few of them. And uh, I'm like middle wall at creation. I'm 15 years old. And it was like last year, middle wall at creation, session with Lily. She's like doing her first McTwist, yeah. you know. So it's like. That's rad, isn't it? There's these, yeah, these weird like serendipitous type things. Mm -hmm. that you... Yeah. But yeah, going out to Tampa, I am. And then like met people there, like in low mates, just like I met Josh Stafford and Alex Perelson and we were just mm. like 
we had the same like kind of skate heroes like the people that yeah. we look up looked up to or wanted to skate like and then they it was like you kind of fall into like mm. your little crew that all kind of like the same thing and then once i'd met alex that was like it i was just like that was a dude i went and stayed with out there and him and Josh. so did you end up going back quite a bit just stay with alex Carlson? yeah yeah and like i was on monster at that point and uh went out to do like um x games and stuff yeah and they kind of knew that we were mates and he was doing the pro one and they'd like started putting us in rooms together and then it was like so you're just like yeah every trip hotel room together kind of like split rooms and yeah yeah, yeah. like a partner in crime situation yeah and then that do tour thing all came around and it was like I was just going out to them and we just split a room each time and he was my favorite skater you know but also you know and then he was all of his favorite skaters you know he's like kind of shaped a bit of how i would like wanted to approach it it's like yeah yeah i care about what your skating looks like you know and like up until that point you're just sort of doing it and you're not really sin you don't you know so but you hadn't you hadn't moved out moved moved out there at that point you moved after you <clears> won <throat> the uk vert series right after i won the uk vert, that was it that's like Made that's my it. M millions. I'm gonna go. <laughs> that's it. She's like made it. So what? What, it, no, what so year was it when you actually moved out there? She was out there for quite a while. Yeah, I was back and forth um, throughout school, and like I was getting paid by various people, and I could just kind of go back. All your mates at school who didn't skate, they were like, "This guy's killing it, getting all this money." He's got. I don't think people at school sponsored even by know. Monster. Yeah. Like, no one notices, do they? Did you keep it pretty low key? Mm, yeah, all my mates knew. And they yeah. were like stoked because they all drank Monster. So it's like, yeah, just you know, here you go. It's another, another crate of Monster for you. But yeah, I was back and forth. And my parents were like, they supported me so much. Yeah. With not like financially, but just like supporting being legends. Yeah. To just be like, oh, yeah. you can do being whatever parents. You want to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I mean, there's a lot to be said about that. You know, I mean, having parents that are, that are backing you and yeah. what you're doing, it, you know, it, it really helps. But that was, that was their one condition now. Like, you can do whatever you want with your your life like however you want to do this but can you finish school yeah like which is fair it was totally fair <clears throat> especially if your dad's a science teacher yeah Wait, was he the teacher at your school no no imagine that and then you your son drops out to go skateboarding but i had a my form tutor who's like he was a bit of an inspiration for me as well because he was like kind of let me do what i needed to do didn't make a fuss of it and kind of advocated for me like well if you needed time off like, and i'm gonna do go do this comp and he's like yeah sure like yeah you know like we'll figure it out oh sick that's a special delivery from cheney sam's new pro board oh look at that have you seen this one yet i have yeah that's not the the new oh it's news. not the new one i'll oh, <sighs> take it away put it in the bin we'll we'll get you to sign that in a bit and okay, we'll give it away on, on the show so thanks Cheney. because i want to know about like properly moving there like how did you do it was it unlike a, an athlete visa uh you, not at first so Cause how did you sat there for so long finished school the day i finished my last exam went to do like a do tour and i just went out there and i went out there for like i was just i'm gonna go for three months because that's what you could do on you yeah that's your limit and then i broke my wrist like at do tour um the first week of the trip and then uh i actually got that sorted out there and like alex paid for my cert he like they were like it's gonna cost you 30 grand to fix your wrist kind of thing mm -hmm. and i d d obviously didn't have the right travel insurance or whatever and they're like nah we're not paying for it and then i was gonna have to come home and it was like my first i just finished school i'm like i'm staying out here i don't want to i don't know what didn't know what to do and then i told the doctor that I was like, I can't afford that. Like, I'm gonna have to pay for it myself, kind of thing. And uh, they were like, Oh, we could do it for, we could do it cheaper. Mates rates. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they it ended up being like two grand, plus the anaesthetic, and then Alex loaned me the money. Yeah. To do that because I looked into getting a flight home the next day, to get this like my I had like dislocated my wrist and broke the scaphoid and mm -hmm. whatever, and it was gonna be like a couple of grand. So I was like, I'll just do it here. You know, mm. Alex is yeah. gonna, he's gonna lend me the money. You know, mm -hmm. um, so he lent me the money and. Sorry, like so the the cost of it went from thirty grand down to two. Yeah, because and why? Like what? Insurance in, and stuff. in America, the one of the laws is that they the 
they don't have to give you a breakdown on what the prices are for in the medical system. So hospitals can basically put crazy markup on anything. It's one of the things that's like a bit of a problem with the healthcare system. So yeah. actually it was only the bare cost of it was two grand. I think like the insurance company, they would charge them this much. And then right. what they were going to charge me as a person paying for it myself was like, <clears throat> like this was, it was cool because it was in San Diego and like there's loads of skaters around there and like core orthopedics is like down the road from the YMCA yeah, and everyone yeah. skates mm -hmm. and they like, you know, they got all like Tony Hawk and yeah, yeah, whichever skaters had been in there for their yeah surgeries and they were like yeah we'll help you out so nice. they hooked it up and Alex paid and I kind of owed him a load of money for a while um, but it was sort of chill and then I stayed with Alex me him and Josh got an apartment um, that we had for a year and I was just back and forth and I was just going on holiday visa three months back and forth back and forth and then it got kind of like were they questioning like questioning it got, it always it got a bit gnarly there. yeah and then you like they're asking how you're making the money or what you're yeah, doing what you were you could. doing going there three months coming back for like a month or were you literally coming back a couple of days then straight back out i was like just going on a trip you know i'd like yeah. be there until i went on a skate trip and like i think one of the things that like really helped me going out there was i didn't go like i'm moving to america See you later, Europe. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I was basically like kept all my sponsors in Europe and was like, I'm just going to be like back and forth kind of thing. Yeah. And I'd come back for events and like kind of managed to work with the companies like like Monster, especially like in the US and in the, in Europe and then dwindle and like start getting shoes from Vans through Powley. And like I kind of just didn't, close off one either avenue yeah, yeah you don't need to burn the bridge really yeah but i see some dudes doing that you know they're like yeah. oh, i'm gonna go out to america i need to be on can you put me on this and it's like the last thing i think any team manager wants is like to feel pressured by some someone do you know what i mean like someone yeah, yeah. to be like put me on the team and, and there's like, one person nah. whose name springs into my mind as soon as you start talking about it and i'm not going to repeat it it's just about working with those people yeah, yeah. and like being like, I'm doing this thing. How how can you like? Do you think you can support me? How can it? you still help? Yeah, and like, I was still traveling back to Europe all the time. And then, how was it getting sketchy when you were coming back? How long did it take from to be like? I think it was you're spending one... more time here than you are back home. And, and at this point, were you still on blind Europe, or so you hadn't gone to full blind? Well, full blind. Though. No, I think like I had been seeing Weiss around a bit, and like Weiss big up Weiss. Big up Weiss. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. the best man. He's like mm. totally made my time in skating what it's been, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, he's an absolute legend. And thanks, Weiss. Appreciate just, it. Just Big on, up just, Weiss. Yeah. Just on Bill Weiss, one thing that he does, which so many other brands don't, is, for example, when we post out new products from brands that he's been involved with, talking, you know, before the stuff he's involved with now with Opera, he would always personally message back, thanks for the support. Yeah. And that's such a, I know it's just probably a generic copy paste thing that he does, but no other brands do that. Mm. Well, there's a few little ones that do it. But like yeah. that, from that level yeah. of who he is, that, that, that goes a long way. I mean, he, he always, he is like, he cares about every person that he works with. Yeah. You know, whether it's like the skaters or the shops, like he gets that it's what makes this whole thing work. Yeah. yeah. So like, uh, you know, he's he's that's why he's really good at that because he'll go into the shops. Like, yeah, you could have some, like, sales rep do it, but it's like Weiss is just like, yeah, I might just like I'll go and see that dude. And he and he said to me from like a really young age, it's like, it's not just about like what you do. It's like how many hands do you shake. Like we go on these tours. Yeah. And like I remember going on a tour and being like, it was with like. TJ Rogers and Seven and Cody McIntyre and it was like Kevin Roma. I was like, I was just like, what the hell was I doing there? <laughs> mm. Um and we did a couple of demos where I was just kinda like sat there and watched them skate these like destroy these ledges. Yeah. And I was like, kind of like feels a bit weird, like I haven't really done anything. And he was like, No nah, man, you just showed up and like you met yeah. the people in the shop yeah, and yeah. like you know, and then they just like, I remember someone posting a picture of me from the demo and I was like, that's cool. I didn't even skate. Yeah. But, but they were like. So 
that's part of being a pro skater or you know a sponsored skateboarder. Yeah, weren't even pro at that time. It's not just about the skateboarding, the act of skateboarding. It's about being somebody Present. that the kids can look up to and are like hey, go home and like mom i met sam beckett today and just being like that kind of thing a real person with it yeah you know like i don't know not being a fucking dick. like that was kind of what inspired me about all the blueprint demos or mm. or whatever it was that came to the arm it's like they're, they're just people like they're right there you know like yeah and like you know it means more to the people i think anyway yeah and i think that's one of the For things sure, that yeah. does really well with Whatever he did with Blind and the stuff we did with Madness and, and our opera has like been a bit more difficult because of the sort of skateboard climate, but it's like... Yeah, it's pretty fucked out there. It's just like, you know, you, it's who you meeting people. It's yeah. like skate, mm -hmm. you know, when you go to a skate park and have a session with people, they're like, oh yeah, we had a session. That was cool. Yeah. We'll, we'll come back to Madness and how, you know, everything changed and then into opera. How, um, how long how long was you out in the states before before you went <coughs> pro for blind or even got on the full team like was it discussed did you know yeah. you were going to go pro how was you presented the pro board um so i remember the advert for it, it was like it was like a uh black and white board yeah. thing with the skeleton keyboard or something events. like that yeah i d i didn't know you still got one i've still got one somewhere yeah can we have it um no just say no but yeah, I didn't know anything about that pro thing. Like that wasn't that wasn't where I was going with my skating. Really, I was just yeah. like, I'm just doing this thing. Um, oh, there you go. Is um, this from the? So basically, they used to do these like damn Sundays, yeah, like, edits, and uh, they were always really fun. You just go out and film for a day and like film an edit. Sometimes they'd be quite stressful. You're like, gotta get a whole edit. But um, they were just like, oh. I think Scott Howes was working at Dwindle mm -hmm. and he was just like, oh, you got to do one at House of Vans like while you're back kind of thing. And uh, I was like, sure, yeah, great. Yeah, we can do that. And I was kind of feeling a bit stressed about having to film this edit. And then like all of a sudden there was loads of people in town and I was like, what's going on? Here? I was like, no, I had no idea. I was like, basically, I've got to go and do this. I've got to go and film this thing. Like, Everyone's like, yeah, cool, whatever. Like, we're just like, you know, like Juju was there. We were skating with Juju all the time. Jake Collins and Socks and like, I think Pete and Pete and uh, Mark were there. Just like, just like loads of people were in town for some reason. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea. I was just like, oh, this is cool. Everyone's here, but kind of annoying because I really need to like film, film this edit. This edit. <laughs> yeah. And like, it's kind of, like, I remember being like i wasn't pissed off or anything but i was kind of like stressing because yeah, i like, want to rush the edit out i to wanted to like have a town. session with my mates and stuff but i'm like i don't know what else i'm gonna do in this thing like yeah, yeah. and uh i had no idea basically like we said hooked it all up and he'd worked with navs as well because skeleton kid just yeah yeah and yeah. then uh it was definitely the biggest surprise ever and people were like you're an idiot like what's <laughs> how did you not know there was like 20 <laughs> of my mates in town but i just like wasn't where my head was at with it. Yeah, I'm not yeah. like, I'm going to be pro. Cause but also, you wasn't expecting it. No, and also like the other pros on the team, like that was like kind of traveling on some trips with like, like I say, it was like TJ Rogers, Cody McIntyre, Kevin Romar. I was like, that's who's pro yeah, on yeah. this company. And mm -hmm. I, I was just sort of like, it was a bit of a fallout. And I guess that's kind of why it made sense. You know, Reese asked me about doing this next thing. Um, a few times we we're trying to get it going i don't know if you want to get because this is kind of how it's, it makes sense to go there yeah, from yeah. this is like yeah, yeah he asked me a few times about like what if we did like a different team that was like an offshoot of blind and i was like oh yeah it'd be cool to have some people to like skate with on a trip sort of thing yeah because at that point you would just been going on trips with street skaters right yeah and just like which was pretty epic like, yeah because it was the side of skating that again i was like exposed to like just seeing how good people could be on TJ Rogers. Yeah. Like TJ, I've never seen anyone just like do so many skateboard tricks and just shut like a ledge down, mm. yeah. you know, like just skating a ledge and just like hours of just like reeling off tricks. And anyway, so that was, yeah, I wasn't really expecting it because of that kind of thing. And when we did say like, Hey, we should do something. 
It's so sick that Weiss approached you about it as well. <clears throat> yeah. And was like talking to you about it. Yeah, it was a bit, I didn't, again, I think I was pretty naive. I was a bit oblivious to what was going on. He's like, yeah, yeah we'll just do another company kind of thing. And I was like, yeah, all right, this is cool. Um, <laughs> and there, he was talking like, you know, there was talk about who else we were going to get involved and how it was going to work And who, out. what names were being thrown around at that point? Um, I think Brad McLean was like, mm. like, really killing it at that point and like we were just like yeah brad's good he doesn't have a board sponsor or maybe he was on powell or something but, um and then alex was kind of like uh, in his up and down phase at that point mm -hmm. and he was like the things were real had sort of gone just ended and um there was other stuff going on he had like you know and he was sort of and it kind of all aligned at that moment. Mm -hmm. And Clay moved into, Clay had moved out from, where is he from? North Carolina or something? Carolina, some, somewhere out there. America. Uh, somewhere in America, that yeah. isn't California. Um, I could be so wrong, sorry Clay. I don't know, <laughs> I can't remember. Can you Google that phrase? Shout out Clay. Um, How do you spell his surname? Kreena, Kreena, how Kreena, do you say yeah. it? K -R. He was skating for, yeah moonshine yeah, for a while wasn't he do you remember that yeah like the uk brand yeah, like go. jesse thomas was on it yeah I, I met him years ago at the boardroom in leicester and he was fucking that park was just too small for him south yeah carolina. like south carolina everything yeah. was just everything was too small for him everything just looked like a mini ramp when he was skating the biggest shit yeah clay had basically like was in california and he was kind of like we were skating with him a bit and he was going to lots of vert things and mm -hmm. like he just that, that vert attack where he'd like just skated the whole thing padless and mm. hit the roof and gone nuts and it was like yeah he went mental that year didn't he, he went absolutely mental and it was just like that's the dude he's like on moonshine or whatever and mm -hmm. it's like yeah that's cool so clay kind of came into the mix and at that point i had you spoke to Ace as well, didn't you? Ace Pelican. I spoke to Ace, yeah, yeah. That was a bit afterwards. So like, I was going to say, did you have, you clearly had a lot of input with the team because when Ace was on, we were like, how did you end up on that? And he was like, you found him and messaged him about it. Yeah, we basically, he was like, he just included us in everything. So yeah. from the beginning, him and Bod included us in like. Which is sick. It didn't have a name. It was like, well, you know, we came up with lots of stuff, but he was like, what do you think about this? What do you think about this color? What do you think about this? Um, what was Badis's original name? Was it Mind Trip? No, so that was a whole other side thing with that, like after we'd got going. So ba I'll get there eventually. Yeah, I take your time, yeah. <laughs> Basically, just like, so many questions. We s he's got, we've kind of assembled a bit of a crew. There's like me and Alex and Clay. And by that point, I'd given Clay my room at the house and I converted the shed at Alex's house. With the goats with the goats yeah alex had bought this house and it was full skate house there's probably like seven of us that lived there that was alex doing quite well out of skating at that stage i can't oh, he'd, he'd like, been killing it yeah so he was on and off real wasn't he and yeah he'd but, been killing it and then kind of like contest winnings i guess as well yeah he won maloof and yeah he kind of got a bit lost in the in the party and uh I think just as well having a lot from a young age. Yeah. And he devoted his whole childhood to skateboarding. So like that's what the, one of the things he'd say is like my youth, like not not like his youth, but it's like he didn't speak to people yeah. or like do like normal. He just skated. 80, like 18 year old things. Yeah. He was down at the ramp, like filming, just like perfecting skateboarding. He was on a mm. quest to like perfect bird skating, you know? So it's like, he got pretty close to. He got completely. He was the golden child, I reckon. Yeah, he got mm -hmm. pretty close. I remember um, seeing the first clips of him coming out. Like I can't remember what ramp it was, and he was just flying around. I thought, oh, here we go. Yeah. Like he's definitely on something here. It, like, he was so high and just travelled so far. It was like, I got some goosebumps. It was magic. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. His skateboarding was absolute magic, and then like, yeah, I got really like lucky, you know, because we became such good friends. I got to spend so much time with him and then yeah. he introduced me to all of it, you know, like then I was like, you know, we'd be at comps and we'd be hanging out with Rune and we'd be like hanging out with PLG or whoever. And he's like, his favorite skaters were like 
you know, Max Schaff and yeah, yeah. we're just like obsessing over all of these mm. skaters. And that was like kind of shaped a lot of how I wanted to skate and mm -hmm. like, yeah, that. and also got really lucky in becoming friends with a lot of those people, you know, like Cross always looked out for us, you know, cause he loved Alex. And then he's like, who's this kid? Yeah, cool. Like, so we got super lucky in that scene and like, and I, I got so much to thank Alex for mm -hmm. just because he put up with me for a long time, you know, and he kind of took me in and like I stayed with his, him and his dad for a bit and, and then we had a place and he, I had a permanent place at his house, you know? Mm. Yeah. And it, he kind of let me come and go as I pleased and, mm. um, shout out Alex, shout out Alex Perlson. Um, but yeah, so that, that's kind of forming this little crew and Clay's living mm -hmm. with us. And then Jack Fardell came into the mix. Jack Fardell was sick. Yeah, and then Cody Lockwood was sort of hanging out with us for a bit. And yeah, then he it went kind to of, Creature. He went to Creature like just before we were going to launch. And um, Chris Cope was kind of like coming on some missions with us and we skating mm. pools with him a bit. And like, mm -hmm. I was so keen to get him involved. Yeah. Because he's like, savage. Because he's fucking sick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we kind of like, he gave us that free reign to like form. Did Whatever. he say how many riders you needed, how many AMs, how many pros, or was it just... He was just like, I think he was aiming for four of yeah. us. But he was like, you know, he was like, it has to be organic, like whatever you guys want to do. Yeah, And it made rad. sense because we lived in the house together. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And then um, we were just going on filming missions and it all really worked, basically, because yeah. I was like, yeah. Um and, and then the name got the name thing yeah so we there was another kid uh toby ryan who just mm. is like insane now mm -hmm. he was kind of knocking around and like was a little vert kid and we were just like he was a vert kid oh yeah he was savage amazing frontside inverts he so hang on we talking about the guy backside nollie flipped down wallenberg yeah he was a vert kid he was a vert kid yeah and he, he skated mega when he was like lit, he was like so that know. that probably explains why he's fucking he's a maniac on yeah. street isn't he mm -hmm. he was he's like only a mega tiny fetus. isn't he as yeah well. yeah so we we were bringing him on some trips and like you know he just like he was just growing up and he was sort of learning what he wanted to do with skating and i think he's messing was, about on the mega ramp yeah and he was sort of like got to the point where he was like oh, you know i kind of want to do this i think he was getting some pressure from dc to just film street stuff and we'd like been on this uh madness trip and he's like it was insane. This little guy, yeah, just like do tail grab fives and stuff, and front side flip through corners, and like, uh, I mean, yeah, that kid is. That Did, kid I wonder is if he special. still throws it down on vert every now and then, because that like, sure that part could. that came out recent, well, fairly recently with him, yeah, for it was sure, the gnarliest could. street stuff. Yeah, like he could do like jolly members, like the front side invert revert type yeah. thing, and. But it's like Uto as well, isn't it? Like he can. Yeah, Uto is. Like it's fucking. Imagine being that good that you can do both to that standard. Yeah. Like, I think it really helps your your board control. And yeah. Stuff. Like. Yeah. Even like, I remember Ross McGowan just like being hmm. really good at cracking airs, frontside airs, and then seeing him skate street and just like, wow. That's yeah. Amazing that he can. Yeah, it translates, I guess, doesn't it? Sorry. Yeah. So the name. The name thing. We were going to go on a Europe trip. Yeah. And this guy from Canada had been like messaging us and apparently he had a company called Madness, but it was like M A D N three S S and their whole thing was like doing like Gucci grip rip offs. Right. Like they did like wow. fake Gucci grip and Louis V grip and but Was this after you This is been after it been launched. Yeah. Like we we've, we've been going for like six months or something and he's basically like dwindles a massive corporation i'm gonna sue you guys for two million dollars or something whatever he pulled out and it was just like the company's worth like minus 30 grand or whatever we put people had put like we and dwindle had put into it mm. um to be fair he did have like a yeezy logo because that was like the color the like yeezy color and the company was called mad madden 3ss they'd never registered it anywhere yeah but it was like we were kind of like we says did you know about this because it's like there's like there was a similarity in the like color or whatever and while this whole like this guy's like threatening to take dwindle to court we were like about to do this tour and then they were like 
shit we just changed the name of the tour for like so it's like mind trip tour mm -hmm. i don't like i don't think anyone was really that like gassed on that name yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but it was like kind of fit the aesthetic of all the graphics you know because mm. the graphics are like heads and you know like madness stuff so but um so we went on this tour we went around germany uk somewhere else a bit of spain and uh, it was pretty sick um good little trip and like i think did tino come with us martino Catania. uh and the whole time it was like kind of we went like is it is it still called madness or is it mind trip mm. we didn't know yeah. it was yeah. <clears throat> I remember it changing yeah and i think like gary rogers had done something on uh on skate the... skate line it was like it was like after it had changed back and he's like thank god that one is like <laughs> who came up with that but it was just like a kind of last minute like okay something needs to change because they would they could were like could actually get sued for it did uh, did it ever come to that i think we like spoke to the guy and was like he's like some skater from canada and like we from canada yeah and yeah it's like i don't really get what you're trying to do like what's the beef like you don't make you make knock off gucci grip yeah like what what are you trying to do and then i think they kind of like smoothed it out once they'd had a conversation and we was like you know it's just like we're trying to do something good for a bunch of skaters like we're not like some billion dollar company. yeah yeah yeah. it's mm -hmm. like it's worth negative money right now like yeah uh so i think the guy was just kind of like yeah i get it and we was like we you can exist like we can all exist it's fine and then that kind of just just some people stopped. have weird ideas about brands and how big they are and how much money is I think yeah, coming like, through the hands of people on the companies and that, don't they? But well, Dwindle is like a massive corporation, you know. And yeah, like, there's a lot of companies under that, and then I think you just like you're a skater and you got your little homey brand or whatever, and mm -hmm. you're just like making knockoff grip tape. They're making knockoff grip tape, and then someone's knocked me off. Yeah, Shit. and then you're offended well, by that. Uh, like, give me that two million dollars. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's a bit weird. I think they just had to have a conversation yeah to see that like everyone was sort of sound and i don't know whether we had ever seen it or or what but like to us it felt really organic like we'd been in the meetings going like he's like what do you reckon about this color and we're like mm, i don't know and then they showed us some of the boards and we're like yeah that's pretty cool yeah but i kind of get on board with the name like mm -hmm. and the, all the team at uh dwindle were super sound it was like we got like bod Boyle, what a legend, you know? And like, oh, yeah, 100%. Kind of let us in and he'd bring us into his office and just be like, this is how we're going to do it. Like, are you guys down with this? Like, what do you want? What do you think about this? We'd like look at lookbooks and just like scratch off boards we didn't like, tell them what we did like. And, you know, it kind of like evolved from there. And like, and we did really well, didn't it? Madness. It was, I mean, for us at Snakes, it was definitely the best selling Dwindle brand for a long time. I remember the Ace said on ace's episode as well the ace shape did really well yeah as soon as his name was on it he said that he noticed that, that shape did really well as well hold on a second we need to talk about sponsoring this episode of the brain train show toby take it away today's sponsor is slappy trucks slappy trucks comes from the mind of mike sinclair and was created through the lockdown he was messing around with his trucks and he thought hold on i might just have a way to make them a little bit better slappy trucks provide the best grind clearance and slappy angle to keep your kingpins from the dreaded snag on smiths feebles hurricanes bennett and barley grinds and has been measured by professor paul schmidt slappy trucks have the quickest turn mm. the best grind clearance less wheel bite no breaking time and are 100 percent more fun i'm currently riding the inverted kingpin hollow ones and they're very nice and i'm getting on great with them they are sick Slappy Trucks also have an incredibly large team and some of our favourites are Mike Fraser, Leonardo Fincus, A. Bethel, the Cab Killer Ira and Arissa True. They're also sorting out Will Sayer, Ben Plum, Liddy Strachan, Twiggy, Manny Haddon. Where can people find out about Slappy Trucks Ford? They can find them at Slappy Trucks on Instagram or www.slappytrucks.com or simply head to Roller Snakes and just search Slappy Trucks and see how many we have in stock. Toby? Back to the show. Back to the show right Back now. Back to the show. Back to the show. Back to now. the show. And I don't want to on shapes. I want to talk about your shape because this is your yeah. shape. So, do you want to talk us through that? Like, when did you first get the chance to make your own shape? Um, I've been riding this shape for too long, I think. Now, 
Yeah. Um, I still love it, but it's coming up on 10 years or so. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, it was when I was at Blind, um, I just had a couple of boards out and like, I went to Dwindle. Weiss was like, oh, you should work with um, Eric. Was the guy there, Eric Centennian? Cent- Centen- I can't re- pronounce his surname, but he's a massive legend, basically. Like, knows everything about any shape, any mold. He's mm. like the wizard of skateboarding. And I just like took in a grosso board and um, the board that I was riding, the blind board that I was riding. And I was like, kind of want to mash these two together. And then he pulled out this like Jamie Thomas board that he'd like kind of knocked up. And then we sat in his office and like, be like, this is what the wheelbase is going to be dimensions, like similar to the mold that I was riding at that time. I was like, I want a square tail and I kind of want this nose, but like more like a normal board. Mm. And then he sent me like three or four different versions. So it was like the mashup of this Grosso board, the Thomas board and like the blind board that I was riding. Nice. And uh, what's the shape called? The Beckett. Yeah, I have no idea what it's called. Mm. But then like, I'm not saying we were the first people, but like there's loads of shapes like this. But I did start seeing loads of shapes like a lot more like similar to that one afterwards. Mm. Um, And I think like, I guess Welcome were making a lot of shapes. They're all a bit different, but. Yeah, they um, kind of made a lot of shapes when well when they first came out. It's all they made. Yeah, they didn't want to. Mm. They didn't want to make a popsicle board, and now look at them. Yeah, just won't talk about. Now that. look at them. No, 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 nothing. Abs- absolute sellout. We'll Why has that one got uh, wheel wells and the, the other ones not? Which one do you ride? The one with wheel wells or I actually wheel wells. So the way that we, we has always run it is like they just print a load of our boards and. We just have a load of our boards and then they put the graphics on them. Right. So I don't always get the like shop quality okay. boards. Yeah, yeah. They used to have, at Dwindle, they used to have the Impact Light, which was like by far the best mm-hmm. thing I've ever ridden. Is that, that are they not using that technology anymore? There's a, like Opera's got the, the slick nose and tail thing yeah. going on, haven't they, at the minute? I don't know how, I'd have to speak to Weiss, but I, yeah. I don't know if Dwindle have still got some. I don't even know if Dwindle Proprietary exists, ownership. they've got something Yeah, there. there probably is something they own that. But whenever that that's... IP ownership or something. Yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. Whenever that's done. Because your original one had the... Yeah, hopefully um, we'll get them. Impact. In, yeah. Something or other. Yeah. And uh, they put these like dual uh, kind of like wheelbase things. Which one do you ride it on? I ride it bang in the middle. Yeah. Like I, that, the boards that I get sent are like... Um, 14 and three quarters, I think. And that's 14 and a half and 15. Mm-hmm. But I do, I have like experimented a bit. I th- like this board, it's like, I think of it like a shark. Like it's, it's like a shark. A shark. It's made to like, it's made to like go fuck up everyone pretty in front fast of it. <laughs> in, a, in a straight line, basically. You know, because right. I was skating a lot of vert. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And like having the big wheelbase. Yeah. It's like, I skate on everything, yeah. but I notice when I'm skating like real cutty, like DIY stuff, that it's a bit more like this thing feels like it, it's like a race car in like the wrong environment, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, just on wheelbase note, uh, last night Venture have released a new truck. It's um, it, it's an eight hole base plate. It does. It's called the Venture V8. So you can adjust the wheelbase just by moving your truck back with something. It's not. It's not out for it's on Instagram. You can adjust the wheelbase without needing to have multiple holes in your board. Are they really having to go that gimmicky well, because their trucks are that shit? All right, listen. So the first release of that truck is an Eric Costin Pro model. Apparently Costin's been doing that for years, drilling the wheelbase so it moves it back in. Mm. So you can have up to a quarter of an inch in or out. There you go. Yeah. Which I think is an amazing idea. I never even because wow. I. Or well, you could get a board that has like two sides. Yeah. Yeah. You could you could have a board that has multiple truck holes and not skate venture. Yeah, I mean no, no shade to venture, but you try I'm gonna try some of those. trucks was a set of ventures and Yeah, mine managed, oh, mine were destructo because it had BAM I on it. Just snap the kingpins on both of them. And I was like, oh, this this doesn't work. I'm like yeah. a tiny kid. Um, but it's interesting anyway that they've done that. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, 
I think like for what I have been skating, this board and Thunders has been like just the ideal killer combo of like yeah. you can go mega fast in a straight line and like <laughs> you know, it's not that I don't do any carving or turning, but it's like like everything's like a bit with a long wheelbase, everything's like slightly and funders yeah. with and funders. where the axles are that gives you an e even longer wheelbase yeah than the 14 or 15 so um do you get sent thunders or anything do you get sent? yeah there? yeah these guys have sort of always always helped you out help me out yeah yeah that's good um i kind of like don't really ask for any product mm -hmm. anymore it's like i've got some product. i've got stuff you know, how, yeah. how long does a board last you like? Because I, I, hear, I hear like when you ski invert, they flatten out a bit with the forces involved. Yeah, you, get, you get the tail flex out. Yeah. I mean, I'm spending a bit more time like working. And, and But I'll change my board every three weeks or so, a month. Like if I'm okay. skating invert a bit, if I'm skating anything else, like you can go through a board a bit quicker. Yeah. yeah. But um, I also like... I used to go through so many boards and shoes and stuff, yeah. you know, and it's just stuff. And like, realistically, like I can make, like I've got a, some virtues, you know, and I've got like, I, I can make a board last a bit longer and it feels a bit more like, might as well just like. Getting the most out of it. Save the, save, you're not like, like, it's a wasteful industry anyway, you know, and like dudes going through boards like every few days or whatever, you're just like, Man, it's crazy. And like, if I can make a board last now, I'm just like, yeah, fuck it. I'll just make it last. Yeah. I'll make, make my shoes last. It's like, I'm less, like I love what, what's going on with Opera, but I'm less excited about like, let me get them new, the new shoes. Like, I've got to try these new. I think that's an age thing though. But yeah, it? it's probably where you've I'm had at. many years where you can get all the freshest, newest product. Yeah. And probably that's worn off a bit now where you're like, actually, the, the bones of this is it's a skateboard that works still and yeah. I'll still ride it I think like anything so, else in my life I would be like I don't, I don't, I'm like pretty good at holding on to clothes and like you sound like a sponsor's dream not yeah. asking for yeah. too much shit and actually using it until you can't use it anymore yeah I saw the dudes from Deluxe in at, uh, in Tampa yeah like, oh do you need some trucks and it's like kind of go for a set Henry six months to a year yeah like yeah maybe if you get around to send me a box that'll be sweet but like no stress <laughs> yeah yeah you know like just to backtrack a little bit so when we hit you off about starting madness that was so that was the end of you on blind and then was it kind of like because you were getting paid by blind was that transferred over to madness how did that work yeah. with like Basically, if you don't mind going into it, I know Toby loves it as well. That's why we're going into such like the a legend about the whole thing is that like because that new board brand is not going to be making any money for a while. So nah, was it like it was about a year that like we we're sort of getting all our ducks in line for the madness thing, mm -hmm. and like we kind of had the crew and we were just riding like I just started riding blanks of the like new boards and whatever, and that was it was so awesome of him. He just like they paid us all. Mm. through dwindle like we were on a team continue but, to pay so you didn't but it was like even. more he was paying us for like to help set the thing up you know like yeah. we, was, we weren't promoting anything but we were just like filming and getting ready to like launch it because you could have like, turned around and been like right for the first year that we're starting it's going to be a bit yeah, more tough because there's not going to be any money coming in from it for sure yeah so it's good that you continued to pay you and that was kind of like you get that luxury if you're starting it out of a massive distribution mm. yeah, yeah. And also, like say, like Bod and Weiss, they know how these things work. Yeah. They know that if you're going to launch a new brand, you need to come out of a clip. You need to have a load of shit in line yeah. before you drop it. Otherwise, it's just going to fall onto yeah. deaf ears and then it will be a waste of time. So, I think that's what's like maybe been a bit more difficult about as it like transitions in, into opera. Like, mm. I don't know the ins and outs of everything that happened at Dwindle, but it just basically fell apart. Like, they got some people bought it. It seems like their intention from the beginning was to like strip the assets and sell the companies, mm. you know, mm. and like uh, they just put people in shitty situations, like all the people that work there. Um, but I'm sure like I, Ace kind of went into it a little bit like they were just like, oh, the first thing that those dudes did 
the the guys that bought it were like we'll just stop paying people because they'll like stay on the brand you know they've got brand loyalty or whatever and we'll just like you know see if we can recoup it they had like a massive amount of inventory from like how covid had gone mm. and like <clears throat> backlogs and then things coming in and there'd been a really good year and they were just like just greedy like yeah. just came in didn't understand how things had worked stopped paying people sacked all the wrong people started just sacking people trying to strip it all down and then everyone was like you know some people stuck it out and some you know there was dudes that blind that like stuck it out there and some people left and like i think it put people like we and louis in like really tough position because mm. they were trying to advocate for all the skaters um but you know like if you're louis or whoever you, he's not like a confrontational dude he's not going to go into that some guy's office and be like pay these people like what you owe them whereas weiss was like i'm gonna be in that dude's office every day i'm gonna fucking piss on his desk if i have to like mm. every day did he, he pays did he piss on someone's desk i don't know if he did but i hope he did i like the thought of him like <laughs> just going weiss. In there, just, He's not scared of getting naked, is he? So, no. Uh, but like, you Bill know, and then there was one point. Bill where Weez. Bill Weez. Bill Weez. There was one point when the new guy, yeah. I won't mention who it is, but he called me and was like, why is, why is everyone leaving? <laughs> it's like, you know, we said, we offered like Weiss to pay him out till the end of his, the month, his month, but he's just left. And then like all the riders, like why are all the riders quitting? Like, do they not have any brand loyalty? And I'm like, you don't get it. Like, you just don't get it. And he's like, well, so what did we do that was so special? And you're just like, this dude's like been with all these people since like the start of their careers. Like, you know, everything that goes on, whether they've got like a little clip on Thrasher or an in transition on the barracks, you know, like he hooked, he's like there advocating for all these people the whole time, you know, like. And doing naked McTwist. And just out there being, <laughs> Being Weiss. Being Weiss, yeah. you know? So it's like, it's a busy schedule he's got. Like, yeah. Um, and that was just like, yeah, these guys got no idea. And then That's I was such like, a funny phone said, call. said to the dude on the phone, I was like, so what's the plan? Like fucking strip it and Walmart everything. And and then his response was, oh, Walmart's kind of oversaturated with skateboard brands at the minute. And I was like, so you tried that? Yeah. Yeah, you've looked and, into and it. And then it was just like, that was the end of the phone call. You know? Yeah. It's like, Fuck. It's just like really sad. Yeah. But I, you know, I, maybe I've been too candid on some of that, but I don't know. I no, have no I, idea what's going on over there. I don't think so. It is That's a real shame because Madness, call, isn't it? yeah, It'll Madness has like... such a good following. Yeah. And it's such a shame that they fucked it so drastically. This is what was cool but... about Madness is like, it, it meant so many different things to different people. Yeah. Like you go to different countries. Like when we went to Spain to do that tour. It's like there's like Hesh crew that like love it. Yeah. You know, and yeah. then you go somewhere else and it's like kind of a different scene of skaters and they're all into it. Yeah. There's like Vert Crew and they're yeah. like, and like, it wasn't like, it was kind of like our thing. We had a crew, mm -hmm. but like people could adopt it. And that was yeah. what I think like makes a really sick brand. I think it was pretty special and it was a shame that it kind of happened like that. And, um, and yeah, it was, it, it was sad because like, a lot of those dudes that worked at Dwindle had like they'd made homes for people, you know, they'd made mm. homes on brands for people, and like, you know, they didn't just destroy a load of companies in the industry, they like kind of destroyed a load of people's like skate families and homes. And it was just, yeah, like, of course, just a bit, bit whack, but very like, whack. Uh, we and Bod, I guess, were sort of like trying to keep it going and work on stuff behind the scenes, and then like, uh, with the opera thing like there was a bit of a there was a bit of a, like a time pressure to sort of mobilize that and like keep a bit of a flow and a relationship mm. with the factory and and well like, when it goes you kind of want to get that out as quick as you can so it doesn't feel like there's been a break yeah so you can keep the hype moving off it i think some people still didn't quite understand what had happened and like you'd still see like i still see madness boards around i still see people like riding my board and it's like well, yeah, okay like cool but you know, and I'm I'm super proud of what we did there and like what the crew kind of did. And then, yeah, with Opera, it's like same, same boards, same factory, um, pretty much fully the same crew. And there's like, you know, 
me, Alex, Clay and Jack are like kind of a bit older now and into different parts of our lives. And there's like sort of this undercurrent of like, you know, Kieran Woolley just turned pro for them. It's like mm -hmm. sick as dude. Uh, but there's another pro coming. Yeah, someone else is coming. I, uh, it's cool. Like we'll, we still like, you know, I feel pretty out of it. Like I'm living back in the UK now. Yeah. And, um, you know, like skating slightly different for me now, like where I'm at with it. And, yeah. But we still got a group chat and he'll still be like, what does everyone think of this dude? Yeah. What about this dude? Like, mm. who's this? Uh, blah, blah, blah. And like, um, I guess for me, it's really exciting because like that house isn't in existence anymore. Like, like, and that there's a different nucleus to this thing. Mm. And I kind of want to see those dudes run with it. Like Kieran, Trey, Jed, uh, there's a kid called Nick Papa, Nick Papa. Um, not to be confused with Mickey Papa, but like, no, oh, Mickey Papa. Oh, Mickey Papa. Oh, is he? Uh, but yeah, <laughs> Interesting. Nick, Nick Papa and, uh, yeah, like there's like a bit of a different nucleus with it. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, th I think they're all incredible skaters and I kind of think that's where it's at with it for now. And it sounds like, you know, there's going to be a lot more trips and things happening. Yeah. And I think like y you kind of need that, you know, and I was like coming back off, you know, after COVID and everything, it's just like, it's like, unfortunately kind of got to start back at the beginning of like going and shaking everyone's hand and like saying what's up. And yeah. Just building it back sessions up. Going and some, yeah, some clips out and yeah. We got, got laid off overnight pretty much. They were we like, they, they just called him and were like, yeah, oh, no. you're going to have to go. You've got a month. Kind of yeah. And, and then, then that was, the... and then we were just like, yeah, we're done. Yeah. But yeah, I think we, the whole time, you know, cause he's basically, it just made his life like hard. Mm. Yeah. That he's there and he's like trying to run a company, but they're just constantly trying to sack people and not pay anyone. And they're stripping all the money and from under. Trying to strip everything. But um, Dwindle was owned by Highline. Yeah. So Highline is an even bigger, yeah. like next step up. And it's the dudes there, basically. Yeah, they bought it and like, some shit like that. Um, um, but yeah, I think we had been like kind of planning it. Yeah. The whole time, like. Like you knew something we were going do? down. What can we do after? I mean, I think his his goal ultimately was like, can we keep madness? Mm. You know, like he wanted to keep the name, keep the company. I think he was like trying to figure out how he could keep it going. Yeah, but like, they wouldn't allow acquire it, it from them or like, you know, and they were just like, no, we're gonna we're going to do this with it. It'd probably been more profitable. For well, them haven't, to... They haven't done anything with it though. No, they just, I mean, it'll probably turn up, like I say, it'll turn up in like Walmart. Or yeah. Whatever. It would just be like, yeah, I don't understand what their, $20 what their whole, or something. so but like, so Eric what they, Willem, who does, he did all the artwork and graphics. Like he's doing a lot of opera stuff now. And yeah. Like, you know, I'd, I really don't know where they'd go with those brands. You know, now there's like, there's no one there. It's not a thing. Yeah, so that's what I was thinking. Like, they just recycle what is, the old ones. Again. What is what is their plan? Like, was their plan to go in and just take over and hope it all ran the same? And now it doesn't. What they're just gonna churn out shit quality completes or something I like have that? No idea. This was really just because they wanted to leech off the, it. The regrowth thing. Yeah. Like, I remember having a conversation with Bod and him just being like, his like aspirations was to like, you know, they were doing like tree planting for however many you know, however many trees they used, they wanted to plant too, you know, like sort of green initiative. Mm. It sounds pretty classic, but he was just like, you know what? I'm thinking we just try and do it for the whole skate industry instead yeah. of like, and pave the way and just be like for every tree that the skateboard industry use, like we have the capacity to like, you know, do make a difference basically. Mm -hmm. And I, and I basically, yeah, I just loved what Bod and Weiss were doing with it all and like where they, it had like you know i'm not sure if it's the same company but no it won't be the company's house dwindle limited is said to be dissolved as of january 2021 hmm. is... so in 2016 you were the first british skateboarder to win the summer x games oh yeah how how did that go <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. it's like you just reminded him yeah oh yeah, oh, yeah. i remember that um <laughs> how did that go down and do you remember was you like planning your line? Like what, what tricks were in the line? What made you, what made you win? Was it difficult? Like, 
How much money did you get from that? What was the yeah? Price what did you win? Tell us now. I think it was like twenty k. <laughs> did your sponsors match it? They didn't match it, but Monster were hooking it up at the time, and like they gave you another twenty. Not quite, but like fifteen. Use it to like. <laughs> Look, Toby needs to know the exact <laughs> figure. I don't. I, I think don't. it was like twelve k or something. Yeah, that's nice. Like, that's nice, isn't it? It was like a podium incentive. Yeah, and you could like if you got first, you get this much. And, yeah. Um, so how did how did that come about and like the lead up to it and stuff? Everything was like building towards that, you know. I was like doing a lot of competitions. Mm -hmm. It was just part of being a vert skater. Not that I was a vert skater, but it's like, you know, it was part part of what I'd grew up with, skating competitions and traveling to competitions. Mm -hmm. And it was like kind of riding for Monster and that was all kind of rolled into that. And, mm. you know, I had a lot to be thankful for with that. The world that that had sort of opened up, like mm -hmm. in doing those comps, like Amateur X Games and Dutor and all sorts basically mm. and i think i'd just been like building on it each time like i was just loving skating but we had a sick crew you know I was yeah like, i was skating with like alex jimmy paul luke danny mayer plg like we yeah, were just yeah. we had a crew and yeah it's like i was living out there so we were skating every day and it was sort of building i'd got third the year before and uh it was just like i think i'd said to rye as well he he brought it up he'd done an interview or something he was like i think i said like oh, i'm gonna focus on comps next year i'm gonna try and do good and like and then we spoke like a bit afterwards and he was like well that went well like, <laughs> it went as you but i just was like skating all the time mm. and i was skating with the right people yeah and it's like i was just loving that period of my life and skate skateboarding yeah you know like we had the crew, we had the place, like we we're at Alex's place. So we skate, but every day we skate Tony's yeah. every day. We skate, we had DC, we were skating the month. It was like monster DC ramp. We could just go there whenever we had keys. Like we would get, turn up there 10 PM, 8 PM, like Zach, Shay, Jimmy. Well, that was kind of a little bit afterwards that we were really, but around that time, you know, mm -hmm. like we were skating with Pierre and, and we were just having these just like, epic sessions every day yeah and like we'd go skate other stuff so we'd definitely have a vert session we'd definitely go skate like prince park or mm. Mm -hmm. even black box was like the side the side room like the street room at black box was right next to the ramp the dc ramp so we were just skating like non-stop and i was just like you know what i'm gonna like focus towards this thing and we were having yeah. sessions wasn't like it like planned a line but you're like there was some tricks in there you that had you like, set tricks in mind i was like i want to do a kickflip body jar i want to do like the ollie 360 rock and roll slide thing and who was you skating with like in the final of that then it was like jimmy moto paul luke so you basically just having a session with your PLG. mates it was as like well the people that are skating with you know yeah. Bucky and what's plg up to now what's where is he pierre had a bit of like a crazy wobble and he he had some injuries and basically like in america you know they had that like the whole like well, maybe it's too candid but they they had like there's quite a few of those skaters like had bad injuries yeah and then in their recovery from surgery they had that whole oxycontin crisis in america oh, right yeah and they were getting prescribed these drugs that were like gnarly massively addictive and yeah yeah i think like they just prolonged people's recovery from certain injuries mm. and pierre had a few injuries and stuff and he ended up going back to canada and he's out in canada he's skating and like he's got a kid and it seems like he's on a pretty in a pretty good zone mm -hmm. but like yeah. pierre was a massive influence and inspiration for a lot of us you know he was like like the most winning vert skateboarder for a really long time yeah, yeah. but also he was like he'd have us around his house and we'd just be like you know we just go around there and like mess around his pool and fucking drink beers and like mm. go he'd like watch skate videos and just like he's a skater you know yeah, like yeah, yeah. yeah i don't know what you know he had this sort of perception of being like a kind of like gee like x games winner kind of guy but he was the most like laid back late like, out. skater skater ever like yeah we just go around his house and watch videos and like he was always down for a session he had a really deep bag of tricks and yeah he like, could do everything like 
Did he do Nolly Five Forty? Nolly Hill Indy Five. Yeah. yeah. Fucking hell. Nolly Vero Hill Indy Five. I think he did like heel flip McTwist. Um, Nolly, like his runs were crazy at that point. You know, Trey flip mute fakie switch heel, switch heel three, five, seven twenty. Like kick flip mute fakie seven twenty. Like he had. I mean, you really thought about them as well. Like, I don't know. It was cool. Like, mm. not bagging on vert skating at the minute at all. But it's like, there's this whole breed of kids that can just like spin and flip and spin and flip. And like there, I did feel like there was a time when you like really had to like craft a vert run. Like yeah, you yeah, had yeah. to like yeah figure out how it was going <clears> to <throat> all be crafted together. And Bucky Lasser was really good for that. And, and like, look good doing it as well. Like Bob was amazing that for That human it. element to it, making it look good. Yeah. And that is like, you know, there was some variety of things and it was like people got their own flavor and it had to flow and there was like this you know i'd speak to jimmy about it all the time now you know it's like he's like oh, i want to i want to add something different into my run or change it or like whatever and it but like the way that he skates is like he's crafted like he's working on crafting like what he thinks like an ec an excellent vert run is looking like you know so it's like the, jimmy wilkins has got to be one of the best vert skaters that's have come out in years well yeah. i've, I've like, never seen unreal. i mean i mean i've never seen it in real life you guys would have done obviously yeah but like seeing it on video you're like you're watching that like, fucking hell but like, i've never seen anyone skate vert like when i when i see clips from skate vert it's like he's skating street yeah, yeah. like he's well, he was a street skater wasn't he and then he no no he was, was always he skating see vert. i thought i thought he, he was I, everything i yeah. heard somewhere that he was like a street skater that got into vert as a bit of a kind of like a joke and then he stuck to it. Uh -huh. But I mentioned where I, I but, I, rumor. but like, I mentioned that to someone. Spread that a bit more. That's that's what happened. I mentioned that to someone and they were like, No, he's always been like a pretty yeah. solid set vert guy. But I've just never seen anyone skate vert how he does. Like so, he's he's like body positioning his legs. Yeah, he makes it look good. Um have you ever been on a session with Chris Miller? Uh yeah, I skated with Chris a bit. Like, so did Jimmy get any inspiration oh, from Chris sure. Miller? Because there's, I can see similarities. Yeah, there like on... when I met Jimmy, he was like, it was probably at one of those Tampas, that one that yeah. was doing the kickflip melon thing, and like, uh, he was young and just like young, quiet kid, um, and skate vert, was pretty shy. Yeah, and like, we just started hanging out. He moved out to California mm -hmm. and. And like you saw, it, saw him go from like this kid that was just like could sort of do stuff to like 15 foot high backside disasters. He he was only doing things perfectly, yeah. you know, like the way that you'd want to do them. And he put that time and effort into like, you know, it's like that's the thing with the new kids. It's like, did they study their skateboarding? Like, what what was motivating them? You know, like mm. what's the what's their inspiration? Because I think kids' you, motivation and inspiration to win now, to to skate now, is to win. Yeah, and, and that's why the all their style flips. just looks. There's like the same. There's a gap in. I think there's a massive gap in it. Like Bod said it to me once. He was like, "No one will ever be Chris Miller again. Like yeah. there'll never be another." Yeah. It's like no, there won't be. There won't be. But I'm like, I mean, Jimmy's a different thing. But it's like, at least, like that dude, you know. And I looked at the, even that with Rune and like other skaters that I looked up to. It's like at least that they're like they're going for something you know they've got an inspiration mm -hmm. and they're like moving towards this thing and they're passionate about the way that it looks yeah um not because it's like oh you gotta look cool but it's just because how what's the perfect expression of that trick and i think like jimmy does that so well mm. now and like i remember like we used to skate together all the time well we'd hang out every day and we'd like play chess together or like mm -hmm there was a point where we like just spent like almost too much time with each other and like we'd learn a trick and then I'd be like, it was like, oh, I was kind of bummed, you know, cause it's like, well, you're never going to do it like Jimmy. You're like, there's no yeah. point in even, yeah. learning. you know, and like I've, I, I love that guy so much. He's, yeah. he's an amazing person. Do you think you can get him over here and then we'll get him on the podcast? Imagine that. Yeah. Jimmy, you coming? I keep trying to get him out here. Like be amazing. Just, We've got the ramps for him. I guess flow. You go over to flow and see that. Yeah, I want to see it in real life. Jimmy's a chiller, though. That. I mean, he came to NAS one year and was just like, "Whoa, <laughs> is this what people do?" Eh? <laughs> like, <laughs> I think with when I look at skating, like that generation thing is like you look up to the skaters and you want to 
do what they're like be them you know what i mean like how yeah. they skate and i think with social media now kids don't have it so they're not studying parts and I mean, like getting look in, at like jimmy's run right you if you break it down you could probably figure out where stuff came from where the tricks where the originate. where they come from the greats and where he's like moved mm. on with it you know like max schaff on that vans ramp back lip into mute five like ali kickflip melon kickflip lean you know like people like alex studied like they loved that i keep saying studied it's like well it kind of is it's it literally is, is. Like within skating, skating that, like, that's that is it that's there's some Giorgio Zatoni stuff it's like chris miller like you only gotta yeah. watch a few clips of chris miller to be like oh yeah that's how you sh that's how you should probably yeah. do that you know mm -hmm. like um just sugar canes like things like that like low c grinds and low c grinds like ollie's truck like remy it's just like stuff that you're like yeah there's a way that yeah his trick selection is top shelf yeah like yeah and then he does it with the the super sick style he's literally fluid never disappoints and it, it's all done perfectly at the highest level in so many different ways yeah. the noise of jimmy's backside disasters yeah, i can hear it in my head and then there's that there's that you ever seen him snap a board doing that no we did a little i've never seen him snap a board but we did a little like i forget what it was like uh sidewalk did like a shop video thing and he yeah. was he'd been to nas and Pauli was like giving him like skate pharmacy oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, I remember and, that. yeah, yeah. and he like had a snap board and then did it and yeah. like snapped a board stuck it back together with skate pharmacy stickers and then did like but i don't maybe he has i've never seen him do it but the, the the technique of doing that is completely back foot unweighted isn't it so it goes in <sighs> I don't know though. Because so sometimes kind of I see him, but it's like the still... wheels hit the deck. Oh, okay. Well, then that's different. I don't know how like, the fuck he does that. I, you know, like when he gets into that poised position, yeah. his legs are like bent back, and you're like, yeah. he's he's like, you know, falling ten foot onto a disaster. That's it's like putting put the context in there, like, like how high is Hawks ramp? Hawks is like fourteen or so, and he's like ten like, foot 13, above. 14. There's a backside disaster, ten foot up. Is it like if you just said that like twenty years ago, people would be like, "What are you fucking talking yeah. about?" Like, people can't do that. But. I mean, I think like to any young person that's like trying to do something with skateboarding, just take stuff that people yeah. have done, and just like put run, twist run with it and put your twist on it. It's like, it's like you look at Jimmy skating. It's like the a lot of kids can't see past that, and I think like the coolest thing with Jimmy is like he can like almost see into the future. It's like what could be possible with this trick. You know, whereas like some other kid learn a disaster and like, you know, I'd probably put myself in that. I'd like, I'd learn an Ollie disaster and be like, that's quite scary. Mm -hmm. I'll leave it there. You know, my skating is a bit more like, I just like learning shit. I've, my inspirations were like Scotty, you know, and like Andy would just do things once and then never do them again. And that was like the magic. And I'm like, how do you recreate some of that magic? Mm -hmm. But it's like, this is like a whole different level of like, it's like you can see into the future as to where it's just, what's possible you know i like the instagram account that's skate clips based and with um sliced in like go. that yeah i swear his wheels hit the deck but there's one on instagram where it's got a peep show clip and he goes obviously this is a fucking disaster yeah yeah and it's shot it's, it's a long record. shot from the bottom and he goes up and that disasters it and that noise where it's like Phew. yeah chris dobstaff or something yeah, it's yeah. called on instagram that i'll have to find it but that is the the ultimate jimmy clip for that backside disaster <laughs> this is a fucking disaster obviously this is a fucking disaster <laughs> corrigan inventing tricks what tricks have you invented i think i've only really done two or maybe three okay and could be are. four i don't know could be five no it's not anymore maybe six like the uh because like navs was kind of like messing with the kickflip and drip okay and he sort of did one and was, then one was, time he said to me, he's like, yeah, but I didn't really do it. I was going to ask you about Navs. Yeah. Riding for Skeleton Key and stuff. And how is he as a person? He seems fucking well cool. Yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> he's like crazy. But, you know, again, I reiterate that. Like, I got so lucky with like meeting those people and then mm. being nice to me. Yeah. They, they didn't have to be nice to me, you know, like. And they were just all, you know, it's kind of felt like you've been taken in and yeah, like yeah. they just seem like with navs and they seem like a rad group like navs and um 
<clears throat> like our partner and those guys they'd always play like the baghead videos for their crew at like a local cinema there yeah. and then they'd message me about it and i was like what did i do to deserve something so nice from like yeah. the, bet the best crew i think like navs is just like he is Pro a skateboarder a skate geek. and he loves it and like you know you get talking to people but we're just skateboarders and we're here and we're doing it and like <laughs> yeah. you're like yeah cool great and but again like i think they just like respect people that are like are into it that like yeah want to do it want to do it and push it in, yeah, in yeah. some way you know so but yeah the kick commander i think navs I, I think he was probably the you know I'd say and you did it him. to fakey as well right and then i did it to fakey yeah so does, i'm pretty sure no one's done that one does that count as two separate inventions i don't know yeah i guess i don't know it's just like a mashup of a load of stuff that's been invented um, Kickflip Andrex, yeah. And that then, sounds quite fiddly. Yeah, it's a bit fiddly. What do you, what's the technique? Just, just just kick foot melon and try and do a... Put your hand down. Yeah, land on your hand. Um, Simple as that. That's all it, it is. But We're like, going to go do them. That was like, you know, it was just like an extension of... I just did a lot of kickflip melons. Yeah. And then it was like, you know, how could, where can did I go Did you see JK's that? doing the kickflip street melon? In the new, I did, yeah. In the new, um, I mean, that's, just, with, well, that's fucking good. See how high it is at the yeah. catch point. Fucking hell, he's good. Yeah, mm. he makes that look really good. We enjoyed watching that. Yeah, it's good. Um, sorry, sidetracked. But yeah, now I'd say like you know, the first ones maybe him, and then I d definitely felt like I'd put my own stamp on something. Yeah, doing it to fakey. Mm -hmm. Um, Cape Flip Indy Five. I believe I was the first person to do it. I had it as a as a blind ad. When just, sorry, it's just coming to my mind. When you because you won the vert attack, didn't you, Malmo? That when you won that, you were doing like the corkscrew fives a lot of the time, and I've not seen you do them since. You know no, that like kind of alley, more like alley nose yeah, five. Yeah. yeah. Why do you not like them? Are you falling out of them? Uh, it looks fucking rad because it nah, just I goes. Do like, I do like them. I just like I spin a bit less these days. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm. A bit they less, look good. A bit less spinny. <laughs> you know like I was, when i'm skating I'm, i feel really powerful and good on my skateboard at the minute but i'm like i guess i'm less motivated to be like spin 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 spin, spin. yeah yeah trick, like trick 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 you yeah. know i'm like i've got tricks i like doing and do you think that have, has do you think work has any part to play in that in for sure yeah you see all the time now and you're like oh, i kind of want to shift to a different place away yeah from i've seen one, enough kids spinning fives left right and center for sure and like last year in this cycle you know i was sort of doing a bit of the comp stuff with some of them and it's like mm. it was such a mashup of work and skating that I kind of lost myself a bit in it that I was just like you know what like I love skating with the team I think it's it, it's amazing like I get so much sick energy from skating with like younger people that are like trying to push themselves you know? mm -hmm. um, but also it's like made me realise things that I like about skateboarding and things that I'm like you know like wh why why do you do certain things when you go skating you know some sometimes you do scary things because you're like oh, I'll, just, I'll try something scary just scare myself a little bit yeah and then other times you're just like, i just do stuff that feels good mm -hmm. and like i'm probably doing less comps and there's less reasons to have to like spin get a bit spinny yeah that i'm like yeah. i'd rather just crack a body jar or don't know who yeah. invented the body jar don't know do you know no. No, I don't know. I probably. I'm Tony trying to think. Like, Tony Hawk, Tony Hawk nah, was around. Like, Daz, come on. We, you need to get Andy on the show for this because his. I've got a feeling it might have been Hawk or. I don't know. Soy. Like, Soy or Kasai. You know, like. Lester uh, Kasai could be a. It's got to be around that time. Yeah. But it could be someone obscure. I mean, Crosso might have mentioned it on the Love Letters. Um, what other tricks did you invent? I think that's like, they're the two. And okay. then, like, I was doing this lean Texas for a bit. I don't think I invented it. It was okay. like a melon Texas plant. Um, like lean melon. Mm -hmm. And then someone was just like... Planting on your front foot. On your back foot. Swifty shot a photo that I was pretty stoked on. It was like on the blue rail at DC. And uh, I was just like, I don't think I'd ever seen anyone do it. Uh, you mentioned working more. Um, do you want to talk to us briefly about your role at Skateboard GB? Sure, yeah. So and what you do? Uh, I've been working at Skateboard GB for the last two years now. 
yeah, I, I went for the job for it's like I think performance development coach. Yeah, guy, some coach guy. Um, that is official. That's coach what I've Beckett. Got, that's what I've yeah. got down in my notes. Yeah, you got you got that official. Um, and that was kind of like it was an interesting move for me, and it was like I'd had a real string of injuries, like I did ACL, broke my ankle, ACL again. I had about three years of surgeries, so like I'd had a surgery every mm. year. And I was kind of like, like, this is, oh, I can't be putting my body through this. It takes its toll. Yeah. And I didn't really heal properly. I didn't really recover properly. And then I got another one and I'm like, you know what? This, uh, this kind of sucks at the minute. Mm -hmm. So it was a bit of a, like a weird time, that period of time. And then it was like COVID and it was like, just like everything had sort of gone a bit mental. And, um, yeah, I'd been on the cycle with Daz. It was pretty much just Daz looking after Halford me jordan and the <laughs> emphasis and, on halford there well yeah it was just he was just looking at I'd, after us and i'd been a bit of part of that and actually they'd really hooked me up with some help yeah. afterwards um that i didn't know was a thing and i would been to this like intensive rehab unit they call it at bisham abbey and basically go there and it's like school for your body sort mm. of thing and mm -hmm. you have like five periods a day physio massage <laughs> strength and conditioning nutrition like everything psychology and like just being there for a week kind of like i was like yeah i realized why i've never actually recovered from an injury and i just keep getting hurt it's because mm. i'm like i don't actually i just get back to where i kind of was and i mm -hmm. don't come back any stronger so that completely kind of changed a lot of my mindset and then i still wasn't ready to skate again and this job kind of came up and i was like yeah, I think I could help a little bit there. Mm. I might have something for that. And uh, and then, yeah, then kind of. So what is actually involved in your job now yeah, in, your in, in like layman's terms? Like... At the minute, yeah. So I guess like development of the team yeah. that we have. Um, so I guess like we've been getting ready for events and, you know, like we were so heavily focused on going to Paris and getting people there mm -hmm. and just trying to like, so, you know, sometimes I'm out skating with people trying to, you know, get them working on stuff and kind of getting them ready for events. And this is funny because Daz is sitting there and he's like, that's not what you, <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's got a different idea of what my job description is, but um, it was just me and Daz at the start of this cycle. Yeah. Well, it was Daz and me. So I was trying to help Darren a little bit with whatever was going on and, it was a big learning curve as to like, you come in being like, this is what people are gonna need. And then it's like, this is what we can do. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. two of us. Um, and it's evolved a lot over the last two years. And it like, we're at this point where I'm like, oh, it's gonna evolve a lot again. You mm -hmm. know, like the next four years is gonna be crazy. And hopefully we're gonna be able to support people a lot better. And I guess my thing with it was like, I'd done a lot of competitions and they were sort of second, nature that was my version of skateboarding yeah. in some ways and um and i just felt like i could maybe help this like next crew next generation navigate it a bit and mm -hmm. um you know like skateboarding has always been loads of fun for me it's been loads of different things it's not just competitions and and i learned a lot from all the people along the way you know like it started with Wingy and Dave and then it's like you had other mentors along the way and people like I get eventually talking about like PLG and Alex and it's like I was like oh yeah maybe I'm kind of in that position where I'm going to be one of them hmm. and like you know like we'd been bringing younger people on trips and stuff and it's just like kind of made sense for me to do that mm -hmm. and also with slowing down with skateboarding myself I was like this could be a cool way to do it. Was there discussions with sponsors that you were you, you were taking that I, sort of next step in your life, if you like, to? Not overly. I mean, I think with like, I got really lucky with kind of like the time that COVID fell. Yeah. People were quite lenient with like, you know, we don't want to just drop people yeah. through this period because we don't know yeah. what's going to happen. And I just had like an ankle surgery and like, monster were kind of like i've been with them for almost six, 16 years and they were sort of like 
we don't know if we're going to renew your contract. Like, do you, unless you make us a real good case this year, like what, like, you know, it's up to you, but mm. we just want to give you a heads up. Like next year we might not renew it. And I was kind of just like, had been in that position where I'd had loads of injuries. So I was just kind of like, you know what? It's cool. That's totally fine. That's super sound of you guys to do that. Mm. And I'm also about to have an ACL reconstruction. So mm. I'm not going to skate this year. Mm. And it, it was kind of fine. And like, I, would, I don't want to get too deep into it, but it was like, there was loads of stuff with like, when I moved back to the UK, like I didn't have anywhere really. Like I'd sort of not moved out of my parents' house when I'd been in the UK. I just went to America and I lived there. Mm. And then like came back by Marseille for a bit and like, so you hadn't grown up in like one particular city or no, scene no. that you could walk back into kind of thing. Yeah, and I didn't have anywhere to live in the UK other than like kind of crashing with them. So I came back for a few months, had had this surgery and then was like, oh, I got to go live somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then I lived in London for a bit. I was in Hackney like with my friend Elliot who I grew up skating with. He's a chef there and, and spent a lot of time with Ramers and Ramers was like not in the best place. Mm. But was always just kind of like, I wish I had a job. You know, and it's really stuck with me, this thing that he was like, I just want to enjoy skating again. You know, like I wish I just, mm. and it kind of made me go, you know what? You have to make all those, you have to make the decisions, and especially with like sponsors and stuff. You have to make the decisions instead of them making them for you. Mm. And then you being like on your ass, basically. And I'm I was kind of like, about it. yeah, I was kind of like, started making those decisions like, when I was injured, I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to get into different things. I, I, I sort of trained as a forest school leader in Bristol and learn about mushrooms, learned loads about mushrooms. I spent like the whole time on my first yeah. uh, knee surgery, just like learning about mushrooms. I read this book. Is that, is that a good book to start with? This book is like, it's like a textbook, Yeah, but it's incredible. And I think it's like, there's, uh, he's done a lot of stuff on the work that this lady did um finding the mother tree that there's another book but it's like it'll blow your mind like what's going on with mushrooms in the world and can, like, you, can you get that as an audio book i don't know who lady it's like a, i can't no because I, I can't i can't it's such a weighty taste book reading and i was like because i was injured i just like but i learned like i was just like it's I'm available gonna, on audible there you go i was like i'm just gonna like learn other stuff yeah, and yeah. follow other interests and I was mm. doing some thatching with my friend and I was doing carpentry and I was like I, but I was still getting paid to to skate I just couldn't skate yeah because uh, I'd been injured and I was like it wasn't that I wanted to step away from being a sponsored skate but I was like I kind of got to make these decisions for myself before like before it's too late before as well. uh, like someone else makes them for me and like mm. it just made everything so much easier because by the time like monster were like okay we're kind of done and I was like I get it I've been injured for a few years um I was like it's cool like I'm kind it of, doesn't leave a bit of taste does it no, if you make the decision yourself whereas if you just got a call one day you'd be like pissed off about it yeah and the same thing with Vans they were like like the guy who was working for them at the time was just like called me and it was like he's sort of tiptoeing around it I'm like it's all good man like it's fine like mm. I get it. like yeah. when you're a professional skater, there's like, there's an, L there's a job there. You're doing a job kind of thing. Yeah. Like you're representing the co companies, you're putting footage out. You're like, and I've been injured for a few years and I'm like, not really doing that at this point in time. And it's okay. Like, yeah. I'm not like, I felt like I'd done enough with skating and like, you know, I still got ambitions. So I want to film some more stuff. There's tricks I want to do. It's like, I'd like, definitely like to do a couple more video projects, but I'd done enough with it that I'm like, I'm not like clinging on to this idea that I'm like sponsored skater. Well, it's right. being realistic about it. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, a lot of people yeah. do cling on till the the bitter end, I don't mean, they? You can you can flog yourself till the end, you know. You can yeah yeah, and like I think I think skating is a very interesting circle of like where you start out and then where it takes you for a long time. And then it comes back round to its like humble beginnings where you yeah. like skating with your mates that you had when you were like 13 to 17 before you started like doing trips and moving different places. Yeah. I think that's how I see a lot of people skating go. It yeah. always comes back to it's like, I'm just going to go on a session with my old mates again. 
Yeah. And, and we did, just... did that like over COVID when I started skating again. Like it was just like crew in Bristol. Tidy was always up for the session. Yeah. We were skate. Yeah. Like, Big sock. up Tidy Mike. Big up Tidy Mike. What a legend. Legend. There you go. So we've seen him at the weekend, didn't we? Tidy we did. Mike or the weekend just, just gone. Yeah, yeah. the week. Yeah. Uh, and it was like, it was so refreshing to just be like going back to, we're just going on a session. Just going skating. Tidy's going to film it. Yeah. And, yeah, I, you, and you... I wasn't like, I didn't film one trick for that thing. Like there was maybe like two tricks that I filmed for that little part, little clip that we did. Yeah. That weren't just like Tidy pointing the camera at the session. And it was like, it was so much fun. Like we skated yeah. le- like just crew on missions. <clears throat> Like, you know, it's easy when you're in America to get to that point of just being like, if it's not the hardest thing, what's the point? You know, if you're yeah. not filming the gnarliest thing, what's, what's ev- the point? Yeah. And like, just coming back to doing that with like, just going on a mission with Tidy and the crew was like, you know, I fell in love with skating in loads of different ways. Yeah. And like, again, you know, it's not that I hadn't been doing that, but it's like, you always fall, really fall in love with skating. Like mm. the, I go on these trips sometimes with the kids and like, I just skate flat in, in between. I'm like I'm learning stuff, you know? I'm like, I've learned fakey heels when we were in Dubai. It's like mm-hmm. lame. Then I'm not any good at them, but it's just like you can <clears> fall <throat> in love with different bits of it and it means different things to you. And uh, just, you don't have to be the guy that's like winning the comp or Going back to the bit where he said about filming like the gnarliest tricks or what's the point of not filming? What's the point of filming if it's not the gnarliest tricks reminded me of when, you know, when Shipman said he was out there and it ended up just being like, they'd only go skating or on a session if someone were filming hmm. and he'd hit people up to be like, do you want to skate? And they're like, no, we've not got a film with today. Yeah. And that's what kind of burnt him out with it. Like, I just wanted to go skate. Hmm. I think that's a good thing with Bristol because those guys just skate just and if skate, tidy's yeah. there filming that's sick but they're just gonna skate if, if socks is around like shout out socks you mm. need to get socks on yeah, 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 yeah if socks is around it's like that dude he has got the essence of skateboarding like mm. it it lives within socks you know like you can go on a <laughs> session anywhere yeah, yeah. and it's like it's, anything it's on yeah. and it's on and and he wants he's just, there's just you know you're not like what's the point in this that it's just like fucking Yes. Like, I, I guess it's, it. It, I mean, we talk about it quite a bit, but like it's when you b- skateboarding becomes work. Yeah. Then it takes away the original reason that you fell in love with it. And it, then it gets kind of a bit not as yeah pure. It can do. But also like, I think this is the thing that people don't get is that when you're a kid, people are like, oh, sponsored. I want to be sponsored. I want to be this. I want to be that. It's like, no one's there going, oh, I want a job in advertising. Yeah. You know, like, (laughs) that's not what they think it is. And then there was like, you know, there's some moments in my career that I was like, I just like wear the thing and hopefully people think I'm cool enough and they'll wear it some more. And it's like, I'm not cool. Like, I'm, I'm, that's not me trying to be like trendsetter or whatever. It's like, uh, and that was weird to realize that because, you know, people are kind of like, that's the whole gig. You put the t-shirt on and hopefully someone wants to be like you and they mm. do that too. And like, there's lots of things that you realize that I'm like, I'm cool with not being that dude for that, you know? And I love what, there's brands that I love working with. I love that, like we it still got me involved in opera and I love like, you know, what the guys at Slow Gold are doing and mm. Manners like, you can still have shoes whenever you need. It's like, I got loads of shoes to be fair. Like, you know, it's just like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like there's, there's things, people that I like working with because I think I like I like what they're doing, you know, like Kendra was like, oh, I want some stuff. It's like, sick. I like it, yeah. you know, and um, that's kind of like all the, where I'm at with it. It's like, if I like what people are doing, sick, mm-hmm. you know? I love the dudes at 187. They just like make pads and helmets and hook up every body that wears pads and helmets. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, they're just good people involved in, certain things and you're just like yeah I'll, I'll rock that that's cool nice when did you get into making these wooden things behind us like the like the wooden bring some of the spoons down here let me have a little look at some of these spoons. talk to us about the trinkets oh. and can i have one of these spoons Spoon for, my new, for my new house spoon and tell um i just started like that was sort of my dad did a bit of like woodland management and stuff and the more i got into like you know i was always into sort of nature and 
getting out and about and like the more I got into like trees and mushrooms and everything then I don't know I just met some people that made spoons and I just started doing that what wood are they made from all sorts that's a bit of beach yeah I don't know it's just a nice way to pass the time and it's like I get the same thing with like skate you know like you're doing something yeah it's like learning you, a trick isn't it yeah you, you're learning something like tac tactful with yeah your tac what's the word tactile tactile, tactile. yeah tactile. with your hands and like and then you stop doing it and it's still happening in your brain. Like you get mm. to sleep and you're like, like, yeah, it's ticking away. And then you're having this relationship with like something natural. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like the more I started working with different woods, it's like the more you under, like know those trees and you know them at different times of the year. And like you read like any, the, the magic of like whatever it is, like whether it's skating, you think it's magic. It's like mm. nature's like the ultimate like original magic you know it's like um and i definitely you know a lot of the sort of other crafty things and things that i looked into and got into doing while i was like unable to skate were way more going back to like stuff that my dad had sort of shown interest that my dad mm. and my parents had shown me when i was younger and like doing a bit of thatching and just like different traditional crafts with people and i love that stuff you mm. know it's like man you got uh, there's so much respect for all the people that have come before like we got it we got life so easy now mm, and like 100 percent. people used to ha you just have to make everything that you own like now you can just buy it or get sent a box or whatever but yeah. like, do you sell these i have sold them yeah i do occasionally sell them but again it's like i don't do it for that i do it because i like doing stuff you know that one do you I think it's really good I just to like have. The, I like the shape of it and the little, the little ease of the use on thumb, there. Thumb hold. Yeah, there's some ergonomic <laughs> research that's like that. gone into that. I think it's really healthy for people to have interests other than skateboarding because skateboarding can be pretty fucking intense. Skateboarding really jades some people's and minds. And I think it's great that you do this stuff and other people have their little. You come back to skating then and it's like, it's fresh. Yeah. It's nothing yeah. like. It's really good to have a break from it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You want to do it. You're there because you, you're not there because it's habit. You're there because yeah. you're like, oh yeah, I really want to go skate. Because you want to do it. Because mm -hmm. you, you know, get like, you've still got that bug. And I feel great at the minute. It's like obviously like we we put a load of work into skateboard GB stuff and yeah. the team. And but like when I go skating now, it's because I've like got a bit of time, and I want to go and so you make the most of it and enjoy it. And I like enjoy it like it's mm -hmm. something different. You know, it's like. Mm it was always like a way to express yourself but it's like so expressive sometimes you know like i get to move my body around you know like mm -hmm. you get to move around you get to you know i'm not like so focused on learning new tricks it's more like am i going to do that old one a bit different like exploring front side grinds like backside mm. airs and exploring front side grinds that's what should be the title for this one yeah exploring front side told you grinds it all goes back in full circle we were talking about it like the front side grind and backside airs they're like transition skaters like fingerprints you mm. know like you can tell a lot about someone skating talking about it with jimmy it's like you tell a lot about someone skating by the way that they do a front side grind or a backside air it pretty much shows what they care about mm. do you know what i mean you see yeah, these kids explain and, what do you mean the it's like, it. you see some kids like and they the way they do a backside air is like it's just like a utilitarian. I've just got to do this to get from A to, to B to get speed to do a mm. thing, and they like haven't really thought about it, and they don't necessarily look like they're feeling anything about it. And then you see someone crack a backside air who like likes it. Not yeah. that these kids don't like it, but it's like there's it's a different thing for them. You know, like everyone's got their take on it. Whether it's like you know, Navs was super good at like kind of showing you the way with that because yeah, it's like yeah. it doesn't matter it's how you do it how do you do it what's your thing and you look at Miller do a backside air and you look at Giorgio or you like everyone's got a different backside air mm -hmm. you know and like it is their fingerprint but then if the kid it's or, not just visually though it's the sound it makes as well isn't it like, different sounds different it, like you say the crack of it flows off different the... feelings and you have to remember that within skating because that's that is a massive part of skating is it's not what you do, it's how you do it. Yeah, it's all how you do it. You know, I mean, look at the people that it's people go... Presentation. Well, look at Gino. I mean, he's never done... He's not got an enormous bag of tricks. He, You know, he can do a lot of stuff. 
but it's the way he does it. Yeah. Like, just that ridiculousness about, you know, I'd rather watch Gino push. I think if you were going to be, like, a true, like, student of skateboarding and, like, delve into, you know, like, you're going to explore the front side grind or you're just going to delve into each one of those tricks where it's, you start with the basics, like, front side grind, back side air, front side air. Like, and then you're, like, the you can open any can of worms. You know, there's people that love every type of invert and they just, they are exploring that thing jam for a bit and it's like there's not enough time in your life that you can do it to be able to really like delve into mm. it and that is the kind of crazy thing when you watch some of the, some of the kids it's like they're not interested in delving into any of those things they're like i think you are a bit of a blank canvas like when you're young like you just want to learn everything you just yeah. want to do everything learn everything you don't care what it looks like necessarily you just oh, i just want to do that um and I'm not saying that every like skate people can do whatever they want with skateboarding. I'm not saying everyone has to be like that nerdy that they're like, I'm gonna do my front side going like this, you know, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I mean, how could you not look at Hewitt and be like, that's how you do a front side? It'd be grind. pretty sick if we could do that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, Hewitt's one of those like you're saying about vert skaters or pool skaters have their like their fingerprint. Yeah. You can see Pete Hewitt. I can see it in my head. Front side grinds how yeah. Hewitt does it. It looks so different to how everyone else does it, yeah. but it's still a front side grind. It's yeah. just that's how he does it. That's like the beauty of skating, really. It's just mm. like, yeah. Same and mm. all the same. And I guess that's where kind of like, yeah, coming back to it, sort of where I'm with my skating at the minute is just mm. like, I just do things the way I like to do them, you mm. know? And that's, doesn't matter really. Like, I'm very fortunate to, that I don't have to care about mm. whether people think it's good or not, you know? Yeah. Like, which is something that you can get trapped in if yeah in like sponsors and stuff it's yeah like, absolutely you're worried about whether people think it's good it's like that is a crazy thing to worry about when you're like mm. trying to do something that you enjoy you know like mm. do people think that was good it's like um opera have been very uh kind and sent in your board which we're going to get you to sign and we'll give away we'll put some details in the uh in the episode about how mm -hmm. people can win it yeah we'll do a little advert but for it. should we wrap it up there yeah the only last thing i had was that the last printed sidewalk cover was you at washington street wasn't it yeah that's we, an honor. and we found a box of them here didn't we like the mm. last the last box of them and i unearthed it and i was like holy shit it's the last issue yeah. so i took a copy home nice so yeah, was, how many covers did you have in total? You had one at um, St. Neots in you as well. Three sidewalks. What was yeah. the St. Neots cover? Was that a body jar or? Rocket Air. Rocket Air. Yeah, nice. big up sidewalk. Thanks yeah, big yeah. up sidewalk. Those recipe. guys, like, that was, yeah, they did a lot for yeah. UK Very skate. Very much so. I hope it wasn't my cover that sort of finished it for it. You know? I think it might have like, Everyone was like, it's <laughs> 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 like that. Yeah. No, what was it? Kickflip like, Melon at Washington Street? Yeah. 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 Was, yeah. I think it would have been more like, oh, we can't top that. Just pack it in there, mate. Yeah, might as well. Yeah, yeah such a yeah. shame, really. That's well, on that note, mate. thanks for coming on, mate. Thanks, thanks for that's me. been that's been a good. Too hard. No, that's what we want sometimes. It's about, yeah. <laughs> but um, right. On that note, roll the, the credits for in the studio audience, please. Cheers, Sam. Let's go do some naked five forties. <laughs> <laughs>